What's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Dumbfounded, and welcome to another episode of Fun with a Dumb. Uh, we've been on a slew of amazing guests, and not just amazing guests, but uh, amazing women who've been mm -hmm. killing it in all different mm -hmm. industries because yes. it's, a, it's a new era it's a new of era, Fun bro. with Dumb. No Jeez. toxicity. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We are more? cleansing ourselves, we are detoxing. Where every other episode, yeah. more vagina, more vagina. That's okay. what I've been yeah, asking exactly. for for yeah. Every I mean, episode, the last three what? The last three guests have been women. That's what I'm saying. That, that's, that's why I fire. mentioned that because we've had uh, Wolf Tyler, back back, yeah, we've had Destiny, Destiny Rogers. Um, that's about it. Mm. <laughs> but, and but Steffi's been here holding down her raps as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, shout to Steffi for the 16 bar verse. And today we have a guest who knows bad rap. Um, right. Really bad. Speaking <laughs> of <laughs> raps, not calling your rap bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, mm. But uh, we're here with a filmmaker and uh, somebody I've known for the last five years. Five, well, actually, more than five more years than now. Five years. Yeah, more than five years. <laughs> um, with me, Rick, Rec, and Aquafina. Mm. We all met because we were the subjects of her documentary back in 2017 called mm. Bad Rap. Sick. And I have the movie yeah. poster right yeah. here. Yes. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. And uh, Bad Rap was a documentary following around four Asian American rappers mm -hmm. and what, wondering why our careers were so <laughs> whack. Who am I? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Um, so the documentary came out in 2017, but we were shooting that years before yeah. and she would just follow us around on our shenanigans, whether it's partying or college shows, you know, right. mixtapes, your, your parents, dry cleaners, business, yeah. and, and, you know, just kind of seeing what it's like to be an Asian in hip hop, um, which was not that lit, at the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not that lit at the time. Um, and, uh, just recently this year. She put out a documentary called Dreamland, The Burning of Black Wall Street, um, produced by LeBron and his production company, Spring Hill. Wait, LeBron who? <laughs> LeBron Kim. Who do you think? LeBron, like? LeBron Kim, the Korean Wait, producer. The yes. LeBron James. LeBron James, Fire. yes. Um, Fire. And um, super important documentary uh, uh, that needed to, uh, this untold history to be told. Right. And, and a very difficult project, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So That's without further ado, Salima Karoma. Woo! Woo! Let's fucking go. Yeah. Can we curse? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you think this is? <laughs> Come on. Uh, let's get the mic closer to her. Okay. To her. Of, course, of course. How are you doing, course, Salima? Of course, of I'm doing great. It's so good to see you guys. I just moved from New York. I feel like I'm doing stand-up. I just moved from New York to uh, LA. What's up with I just moved from what is up? What up, boots out here? Um, Two Asian rappers walking. <laughs> yeah. Um, good seeing uh, you. Yo, you know what's crazy? When I did bad rap, mm -hmm. I was in grad school, right? And I was looking for people. You weren't supposed to be in the film, right? Wow. He, there's a whole backstory on how he got into the film. Yeah. And I just thought at the end of everyone loved your portion. Oh, thank you. You, uh, I started, I wanted to do a K-pop documentary. That wow. was the first thing. I was super into K-pop. I had my own K-pop website. Like wow. that's what I wanted to do, but nobody would call me back, mm. right? And I, you know, I saw Rex Dizzy, who was another <laughs> Asian rapper. You know, you know Rex Dizzy. I saw wow. Rex Dizzy. Uh, performing somewhere and Jay Key, his manager, was behind him hyping, hyping, them, hyping him up. Mm. And I was like, who, who are these dudes? <laughs> yeah. hit, hit them up. <laughs> um, I had hit you up several times. You never responded oh. back. I was like, I am in college and I'm doing a documentary. I'm sure you had gotten that a lot, right? right? right. Had you at that point? Yeah, I mean, that's a crazy thing about this doc that documentary because when I saw the finished product is when I was like, this is tight, you know? But in the beginning, it was really like a, a faith thing, you know? Like yeah. being like, okay, let's just, just follow me around. We could do it, you know what I mean? But it, she was in college, right? you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So when sure. you hear about a college project, like, yeah, yeah I, I get people hitting me up about writing papers and stuff mm. and want, want an interview and things. And I'm like, so at that point it was just like, okay, cool. Like J key came through or somebody just yeah. kind of vouched for you. And we're just like, let's just have her yeah. around. And we ended up capturing some of like the, like a moment in our, in our <laughs> right. history right. that little I'll, I'll carry on like, for the rest of my life. Don't sure. you say that it wasn't like popping like that at the time in my mind, watching it, it was like the big, it was like, 
808s in Heartbreak mm. the, in, in terms of the experimentation. Right. Like it was it was the precursor. Like yeah, that right. was a dope time I agree. for me. I agree. That was like the most fun I've ever had making a film. I learned all your guys' like deepest, darkest shit. Yeah. You know? Um, deepest, darkest <laughs> shit. Yeah. You know? Like I was a, ther I felt like I was a therapist. Yeah. You know, um, dumb. Hmm. There were some things, like I wanted to diagnose you. I wanted to tell you this is what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, um, I know. Can you say it now? <laughs> Can I what? Um, no. no, you know what? No. That, that, here's the thing. So when you when we started shooting that documentary, I think because the fact you were a college student working on this project, we were a lot looser. Right. Totally. With, with the things we shared. Totally. And right. our vulnerability. Hundred percent. That's so true. And I, I was like even wild, and I would say wild shit that I would never say in an interview now. You know, <laughs> I, I'm in a car like being vulnerable about like being jealous about yeah, yeah. certain of homie successes. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm talking about like Asian masculinity, but like real rough around the edges. <laughs> right, 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 I, right. I said a line where I like shitted on Daniel Day Kim. Oh yeah. And then I had a drink with him like like last year <laughs> and the whole time I'm talking to him in my head I'm like has he seen this doctor? <laughs> right, 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 right. like dead ass ain't nobody trying to fuck Daniel I, I say cause uh, you know I think we're talking about do people find Asian men sexy or something yeah. and I was like it's, nah yeah. I don't know blah blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and Salima was like how about Daniel Day Kim from Lost? Yeah. I was like, ain't no one trying to fuck the dude from Lost. <laughs> oh my God. And then I was completely wrong about that. Right. People do want to fuck him, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people want to oh fuck him. Oh my God. So you, once you filmed it, you didn't yeah. have, they didn't, you guys didn't have to like take anything out? Like, did they have any chance to? No, no. Well, I'll, well, I'll tell you a couple. Well, one, I had, uh, when I was sort of done cutting it, I had. D uh, dumb and maybe Rick or maybe mm -hmm. Rick mm -hmm. come and watch one section of it and I sort of needed buy-in at this point they still weren't sort of into it and I, I see dumb watching it uh -huh. and going mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, you know? yeah, yeah. And I'm just watching his face and yeah. he's just like wow this could actually be something right right and that was sort of when I got a little bit of your buy-in there was a point when we did uh, I think it was right before Tribeca mm. There's a portion of the battle. We had a whole battle scene and it was very long. Right. Right. It was like a twelve minute battle scene. And nobody wants to and if you're if you're just going to watch a film, right, you're right. not a hip hop fan, you don't want to watch a, a battle, right. you know. But they do. It, like I had old people coming to me saying, We knew Dumb was gonna win, right. you know, you know, rooting for you. Well, right. It, but all, it, you called me uh, right before Tribeca and you said I think we should take the whole battle out. <laughs> I think you need to cut it down. <laughs> I think you need to cut it down. Uh, I just feel like I'm complaining and I feel like, and it is an insecurity when yeah. you're watching yourself on yeah. screen, right? Yeah. And you're seeing yourself in a way that you've never seen yourself before. So I got a lot of those calls from everybody. Right, for mm -hmm. sure. Oh. I, I, I think, um, yeah, it was very long, you know, because the battle three rounds, like 12 to 15 minutes or something like that. That's a yeah. big part of the film, you know? But there was so many insecurities about myself in that film right you know i, I wasn't sure I, I was like not sure about what my role in the industry was I, you know there's cri critics listening to your music and mm. saying things right you know how did you feel about that that was, that was strategically yeah that was brutal because you had four like big rap media guys yeah. listening to your music watching your music video looking mm. at you and seeing if you're marketable and them kind of being like, nah, like nothing's really sticking out. Mm. Yeah. That really like hurts, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And you're like, and, and you you really take them seriously because these are people you respect For sure. and you've seen. Yeah. You know? mm. um, that All that stuff was tough. But the one thing when I, after I saw the documentary, that's when you said this is something, when I said like, this is something, it is because I knew as a film, it was good. Like as a document documentary, it was a good documentary. It, mm. You got to have all those moments, you yeah. know, the victorious moment at the end, yeah. and the the family element, yeah, yeah. and all those things, and it had all that. Yeah. I mean, for me, the biggest uh, source of security was just like, am I interesting enough as a character to be even part of this documentary? Do you know what I mean? It's like being the, uh, uh, you know, like, okay, talking about my faith and talking about, uh, you know, my family dynamic. I was like, I feel like every Korean or every you know Asian American goes to this, but the way you captured it, it's like you know for me too. Like it's hard to make an album. We're more like let's make an EP or a mixtape because we want 
our like uh, debut, our first impression of ourselves when people listen to us to be like perfect. But then to give that trust to someone else to capture it, you know, and this is a year, pro this is years. It felt like, you know, Boyhood, that movie? Yeah. <laughs> Where it starts off as like kids and then yeah. we're like grown ass men. It's like that metamorphosis, just that development stage for you to capture that. And not only for you to capture it, but also to create a narrative which holds integrity, but also like it's what you're trying to, like the direction you're going for. I think it was perfect. Let, let me ask you, uh, Salima, when you were making that documentary, because um, you said you wanted to start off with K-pop. Yeah. Mm. First of all, uh, you made the right choice because K-pop really <laughs> never took off, did it? Um, no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what, really quickly, uh, BTS had asked to be in Bad Rap, right? Mm. When we were at what? At, yes, yes. Wait, wait, hold on. I've never okay. heard this. Let's talk I didn't about it. I never told you about this. Okay, okay, oh my go God. on. So we were at, sure the mic is close. You can pull it straight yeah, 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 yeah. if you want. So uh, we were at KCON uh, in LA, which is the K-pop uh, convention, the big one, mm. um, and BTS was headlining. And at the time, I had a K-pop website called The One Shots, and I wanted to get them on to, I wanted to get them on to the one shots. I'd interviewed you. I had to interview yep. Danny. Mm -hmm. You know, wanted to get them on, and they were just like lukewarm about it. Right. And then after the show, their person and their manager or something hit me up. They were like, "Yo, you're the one doing bad rap." I go, "Yeah." She's like, "You should have told us they wanted to do that move. They wanted wow. to do that movie." Oh man. Um, wow. And I was just like, "Why would BTS want to do right. a movie about?" I don't even know if it would have made sense. Right. right. Like they're they're not <laughs> Korean American. Yeah. I don't right. even know if I would have said yes. Right. Right. Um. But yes, they wanted to be yeah I, I was at that yeah. KCON. yeah you were at that yeah you know that was the one i was like yeah, freestyling yeah, yeah. Right, 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 stuff. right 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 um, right that's interesting did you learn a lot about actually korean american culture while doing this or mm. because you were into k-pop it sounds that's like but we're like, i'm curious question. if you knew about the difference because like it took me a while to even differentiate <clears throat> that you know okay that's a great question so when you're making a when i found out when you're making a documentary shit like um unfolds like God is is helping, you know, it's like yeah. everything unfolds. Mm. And um, what I learned was this dichotomy between Americanness and Koreanness. Same mm. thing that I go through. My family's from Sierra Leone, you know, being black American and mm. also Sierra Leonean, right? Yeah. Like, um, and I know, I mean, Rex Dizzy had a song called God Bless America at the time, yeah. right? And he was taking I, God Bless America, you know, America <laughs> and sort of twisting it. Yeah. And I think Dumb, the first, one of the first things he says in the film is he says, I'm an American cat. Like, uh -huh. I'm American, right? Uh -huh. That's not something I was going for or looking for. It's something that, that unfolds, right? right? Um, I don't remember what the question was, but... Uh, what, what no, yeah, yeah. Like, like if you if, if you, you kind of dived if you when you um, started making this documentary, you started. Oh, if I learned, if you recognize, yeah. So, so the, what I saw was one. I actually saw. I'll be real with you. I probably saw Korean and Korean Americanness and Koreanness as the same thing, mm. uh, okay. very similar. Right, right. Until there was like you know, Aquafina would be like. I am not Korean American. I'm not the one um, appropriating right. uh, such and such. Like that's at the time BTS, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be honest, like at the time, like if you look at BTS's first things that they come, came out with, it was very like bulletproof. We are bulletproof. Yeah. We're gangsters, right? Mm -hmm. right. Um, and a lot of that had been trickling over into um, sort of the blame for that to Korean Americans, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so that was one thing I sort of noticed that I didn't notice before. Um, and just like the that's other true. shit, like, I mean, it wasn't like, I, I wasn't chilling with Korean American, I was chilling with rappers. Like, right. these are rappers right. who like love hip hop and shit. Like, it's a, that's what I learned most about. Okay. Not like Korean American-ness, but identity, right. yes, for sure. I, right. I definitely, um, I think those are things that bothered some of us. Um, going into the rap game you don't want to think about the asianness element as a rapper who's aspiring you just mm -hmm. want to have a chance to do the thing mm. and you start discovering that it is a huge part of your identity you know i talk about this a lot about my journey growing up around young black kids who were very pro-black like in lamert park and right. very yeah, proud of sure. it and he that helping kind of understand that my asianness is a huge part of my identity that i can't escape Mm. ever you know if i hop on stage i can all be like i'm i'm just a rapper right. respect yeah. me as a rapper but motherfuckers are gonna see me did you sure. want to did as you want to hide from that i did in the beginning because it's mm. like you know every artist is like no nah, respect me for my art all mm. this did. but you don't realize that 
who you are on those aspects is, it becomes a huge part of you mm. no matter what you can't escape <clears throat> that you know what i'm saying yeah. and so i wanted to like ask you because when you went you said you were into k-pop going in yeah. and going into this project specifically which i found interesting because and i found kind of in the same lane right because you have these asian cats going into this um in this hip-hop world that's black culture and yeah. you, you got a director who's black who's into korean mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. so i always felt felt like that part just coincidentally maybe but somehow it, it connects a little bit yeah. Yeah. you know Interesting. uh so the, i guess the sometimes the question that people used to ask me <clears throat> is why do you like k-pop right actually i had a love-hate relationship with k-pop because um i thought that the music was dope it was innovative it, you know at the time i'm just like whoa this shit is innovative <laughs> Gee, <laughs> what? you got 13 <laughs> girls <laughs> you know yeah. all that shit right um <laughs> And, uh, but at the same time, when they portrayed themselves coming to America, it was like right. white girls, you know? And it was black, I'm telling you, it was black girls who were really propping up K-pop yeah. in America oh, sure. at that Still. time, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they were putting in all this money and then you would watch Jay Park. No, I wouldn't say Jay, but actually Jay, Jay Park had a, a black, was like, had one of the first black girls in his mm -hmm. music videos. But it was just like, um, it didn't it didn't feel good it stopped really f feeling oh, good but i used to write about it i used right. to write about it uh -huh. and that shit felt good i mm. wrote for this place called soul beats you know i wrote for hip-hop dx mm -hmm. so i was writing about all this stuff mm. everywhere and thinking about it uh in a way that i don't think people were thinking about it at that time right, right? Mm -hmm. people weren't thinking about asian rappers i don't think dumb yeah. I, I don't know it, no, it, not only really. in K-Town, no, maybe. No, in K-Town, really. it was okay. That's why Bad Rap you know, was like very it's... early in that aspect, you know, capturing that. Because now it's so common, you yeah. know what I mean? Is it? I mean, I mean yeah. I'm saying... There's, like, so well, many Korean rappers. I mean, I just came in last year into this, like, culture. And there are so many no, I'm Korean, not about Korean rappers. rap in korea i'm talking about like no, asian i'm american talking about asian american there's, rappers. there's tons yeah oh yeah but they all yeah. hang out in k-town y'all oh, know yeah. all of them but it's who's like the best <laughs> <laughs> no. i want to ask her that <laughs> I, I just think i just she think... has her opinions I'm <laughs> i mean just... i do have my opinion yeah and can i let me just tell you yeah. what my my overall opinion is and this is for like all i'm not like the fucking guru of art but all art you guys know this like when you did your freestyle the other day what I liked about it, and I said it was norm core. What I liked yeah. about it was it was weird, but it was still weird. It was weirdly on beat, and he norm helped. Core. He helped you with the with the beat, like he killed that, right? Like it felt good. It was something different, right? And it almost felt like when uh, we did bad rap and we had people listen to Aquafina, right? Yeah. And they right. felt like, oh, that shit is different. You know, I hear music all the time. I hear yeah. this shit all the time. Yeah. When I heard you, I was like, whoa, that shit is kind of. Oh kinda my god, interesting. it's interesting. I didn't say it was great. It's okay. interesting. It's interesting. Right? Yeah. It's inter and, and like there's something there there's something there it. right so like uh that's what and i think when you're talking about uh those uh those uh executives that we had listen to your music yeah i called you after that uh, yeah you like you chose the wrong joint to play them i didn't mm. I, I i even i was upset because at this point i think you weren't really you still didn't really know that bad what bad rap was was doing right right true, right. true. um so when i called everybody they said play them i called rick i called aquafina and rec and they said play these two songs they were very meticulous about it mm -hmm. with you you were just like yeah yeah Whatever. just play this and that yeah, yeah, my yeah. new yeah. shit and then this shit i think i should have played genghis khan genghis khan no, would have been the one yeah, yeah. Yeah. because it's just like i'm wilding out it right right the, the, and the, when I played clear, yeah. it was super safe. Super yeah, safe. Yeah, it was not yeah. as... It, it was great production. It was good. Yeah, right? but it was, it was very... It's it's actually a soup. It's one of my most high-quality videos, but it's actually the most boring video. Like, <laughs> out, of, out, out of all the videos that I have. Like, yeah. it's it's clean and everything's mm -hmm. good. Right. But I think what people... It's spe specifically with hip-hop, it's like you have to be the most unique person in the room. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, think sure. about, like... The origins of hip hop mm. in <clears throat> South Bronx, like <laughs> fools had fur coats, and shit right, 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 with leather That's pants, yeah, like yeah, on yeah. stage. You know yeah, what I mean? But you know what? Yesterday I was listening to Stillmatic, right? And I was thinking, I love this album. I don't know if I would have listened to it if it came out now, right. because it, it, you know, it doesn't have no fucking beeps and boops and all this right, other right, shit, right, right? Right, right? So I was thinking, would we have listened to Stillmatic? Would we have listened to Illmatic? Right. Yeah, hip hop has gone through so much of the changes because in the beginning it was so much more eclectic. And when we got to Nas, it was like more toned down and more like, like for sure, street. like sustenance based. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So it, it, I don't know. It, it, it's gone through waves yeah. and stuff. Um, I mean, people love the beeps and boops now. You know what I mean? They want that boops and beeps. <laughs>
You know, um, I mean, bad rap to me, I think, uh, you know, this right now, if you guys are just tuning, we're talking about bad rap, a mm. documentary um, that me, Rick, Aquafine, and Rex Dizzy were the subjects of, and just a time capsule mm. during our time coming up. Uh, it was so great. It was crazy. So great. So many vulnerable moments. Yeah. Um, obviously, we know who became the most successful out of those four. <laughs> did, you know, did you recognize that? Is oh, that, was that's there... such a great question. Did I recognize Do you remember did that you transformation like, that Nora feel... went through in that movie? <laughs> Did you? I'm actually With the curious. Leather okay, okay, yeah. Like, let's I'm talk curious about that. About how you felt when you were there, and did you see mm. that? Like, could you foresee that? What, what did you foresee as far as the futures of the four great uh, subjects? Who was the hardest to interview? Also, okay. <laughs> those are the okay. two. Um. So, what did I foresee? Uh. So I was behind the camera. I didn't say shit. A lot of times I didn't say anything. Mm. I mean, I had shit running through my head. And yeah, I did not course. say anything. We knew shit, shit running through her head. Of course. She wouldn't say it. She would just point. <laughs> She's also like, you're also young. Yeah. Very young. And it's, yeah. it's your first doc. It Is was it my first doc. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy. I've said problematic shit in that doc. <laughs> 100%. Were you like, I want to kill, kill him. <laughs> no, but it wasn't. But for me, sorry. But when it, it wasn't that like you said problematic shit. It was your insecurity right mm. it was your insecurity was. and that's what showed that's and, what and showed. it oozed so it much oozed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because she was like you know because i was talking about how you know because aquafina was just in the beginning stages of her career and was already taking like crazy strides yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you know i think she asked me about is it easier for like asian women to make it in the industry or something. And I was like, yeah, of course, Bob. Well, He's no like, where do you way. see them? And I was like, look at porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Like, I look back on that, I'm like, this shit, I would have gotten in so much in trouble. But it was just like super, there were things that you couldn't see the insecurity in me. Right. You know? Yeah. It, 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 but rightfully so, though, because again, I'm watching this. You are, you'd been in the game for, for longer than a lot of people, right? People knew you. People like when I when I talk about Asian rappers, I say, "Oh, that guy from uh from L.A., right?" Yeah, yeah. It was always dumb. Mm. Um, and so you were this mythology. You were this sort of urban legend kind of thing for for a lot of people. And then to see you be human and be yeah. sort of like not the god that people thought that you were that was a, that was part of a big part of your story, and that was important, right? Yeah. Um, and for you to even question why why haven't you made it mm. right it was I think that was very important now you asked the question did I foresee anything when I interviewed Aquafina she was um, she was insecure because people around her told her to be mm. I'm talking about people she were she was dating people she was right. talking to people who were her friends people who were around her who were supposed to love her um, sort of questioning not questioning but saying this saying straight to her this is a gimmick right or enjoy this mm. um, wow and and that's like I think that I think is you know this is coming from creatives Right? right and then so seeing that even you're questioning it right but i think it's very clear uh the insecurity of why you are questioning it and mm. by the way something that i'm experiencing as a black woman uh who has before never been able to tell her story now mm. motherfuckers are like what stories you got what right. you got what right. you got to tell yeah, right, right? Yeah, yeah. we're trying to hear your shit yeah. right aquafina is also that like she's an asian woman who has a story to tell that yeah. motherfuckers are finally like okay let's tell yeah asian women's story yeah. Yeah. I, I think you know i think there's something that a lot of women deal with in male fragility you know yeah. that that we you know, fucking male fragility that, yeah. that we project on women and that you know that was a clear example of that scene where i was projecting that yeah mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. uh, my insecurities and then blaming the industry mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? i mean you know i think also the beauty of it is if she, the power of editing and like mm. cutting and all these things like the porn a lot of the things that we're talking about that was problematic the way that you edited it it became like highlights of the movie mm. you know like little comic relief little like uh just like parts that's like kind of funny, people just laugh along with it. Yeah. When you said porn, people laughed. Yeah, people right? loved it. People yeah. when when you said Daniel Day Kim, you know, no one likes people, people that was the, that was yeah. the first big laugh yeah. of the film, right? But it's not like people just watched it and laughed and then walked home. Like they they laughed and they thought about it. They thought it, about right? it. Exactly. Right? I mean I mean, to be honest, I was like a lot of times, even in moments like that, I kinda lean into it at like performance style. Yeah. But I was definitely like very vulnerable <clears throat> in that documentary. I was a lot more loose 
because I did not think this was going to be in the fucking Tribeca film. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh, this might be yeah. some KSA you know, <laughs> student association <laughs> shit. So I was not expecting that. So I think everyone felt that way. Uh -huh. And when I saw it, I did think it was special, even though there was moments that didn't make me look good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I still thought the film was special. Um, I mean, so, there's a segment in that movie where like my mom just talked shit about me for like 10 minutes people straight. People love that. That was they great. And that. it was just like, you know, I didn't realize how big that point, that like part's gonna get, you know? Did so, people question you? I'm sorry to come No, no, on. please, please. I actually wanna know more about you mm. as a documentarian. Is it is it something that you've always wanted to do or you knew as a kid? Were you always like interested in people's lives? And I think one, there's a couple of things. I talked to my therapist about this too, but like <laughs> okay. one, I, I loved editing. I used to, you know what I used to do? I used to take a Windows Movie Maker. I used to love Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Dragon Ball Z. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to rip from Kazaa or LimeWire. I used to rip um, music yeah. and just clips and just put them together to music, uh -huh. right? I used to edit all that shit. I love that. Um, I took broadcast in middle school. This is what I love to do. Yeah. And then also, you know, I lived a family life where I had to be aware of shit. I had to be aware of when, when people's moods were a certain way. So mm. I know, I feel, like I, I feel like I've learned how to talk to people oh, okay. um, yeah. because of that. Uh -huh. um, and bring, was that your bring role? out moments from and, them, right? But also like, everybody wants to be, everybody wants love. Yeah, and everybody wants to get people to listen to them. Yeah, be understood. To, to be understood. Yes. Mm. Right. Yes. And yeah. they want someone to listen yes. to them. I don't think I ever told you guys shit about me. Right. You guys that don't is... know. You guys don't really know anything about me, but I know a lot about you because I, I I'm uh -huh. listening, and that's my job. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm interested. Mm -hmm. I'm interested. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in psycho and analyzing why is it that dumb did this really stupid thing uh -huh. right uh -huh. and how does it relate to <laughs> Girl, the theme? i get you i'm right there with you <laughs> how does it relate to the theme of this film right yeah. is it self-sabotage right. you know the fact that he's at home and he should be writing music but he's like fucking thinking about you know some pussy or whatever it is <laughs> like why, why is it that way oh my god i can talk to you for hours about this you understand me <laughs> okay. now i need to go get coffee with you and so that that's and that's very interesting to me he him too yeah very interesting to me because i always felt like rick uh rick is very perceptive he's very he is. he's actually he's the most, introspective for sure he's yes. probably the heart i would say he's the hardest one uh to I don't say interview. We we actually interviewed you twice because the first time I forgot to turn the mic on. <laughs> right, so we had to. It was like a two hour interview. We had to interview you twice. But you are. And I'm never sure if he's. Mm, mm -hmm. I'm never sure. You're putting on a performance. I can't sure. I can't be sure yeah. if he's putting on yeah, a performance. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you're talking <laughs> I know about. what you mean exactly. You know? I don't know. What, I I know exactly what you're talking about. And I, you're too aware. You're too. You're somebody yes. I couldn't do LSD. I couldn't drop acid with because you're too aware. <laughs> and that shit, I would be thinking you're, you're reading my right. mind. But I don't he, like that. We've talked about this with Rick. I think hmm. because of him super immersed in this Korean hierarchy element of like you treat your elders with respect and talk to them this way. Like mm. he really implements that to the rest of society and mm. his friends and everything. Um, and as a performer too, like we all put on a performance, we lean into it extra hard. Like when we come on this podcast, we start right, going right. into a thing. We are like, we yeah, lean yeah. into we it, lean you into know what it. I mean? Um, it. But yeah, to be fully vulnerable in something like that is hard. But then you started seeing that when you interviewed like his mom and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're, and that is the one, like I said, everyone relates to is you and your mom. Mm -hmm. Um, because it spans cultures, right? It, it spans everything. You want to be something and your parents don't want you to be that. They want you to be something else, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I went to Virginia one weekend. This was Danny, Danny, D, Danny Chung was supposed to be our fourth character. Oh. Yeah. Um, Decipher. I'd, I'd actually gone to Philly to spend a weekend with him, uh, interviewed him. Wow. Uh, and the reason why we actually didn't use Danny, I've told you guys this, is because his story uh, was, it was so um, engaging and it was crazy. I mean, it was crazy, but it had yeah. already happened. It was yeah. uh, the past. Yeah. And um, it'd be too much it, for the, it'd take too I, much I'd of actually, the center I, almost. I don't know. I, I've thought about this. I don't know. I think it just, it, it just made, and it, 
you guys were always together. I don't yeah. know. You guys were always together. Right. Was Danny? Danny was there. Was around too. Oh yeah, Danny, right? Danny was around. But you know, Danny has a crazy story with his family yes. and stuff. Yes. Uh, and it could be its own film. It could. Yeah, it's his own thing. I feel like you covered just enough because all the stuff that us four were going through, it's stuff that all of us go through mm. when you cover like rick's dry cleaning part it's we go through that too but right. you highlighted it through rick mm. you know what i mean right. the creative part you highlighted it through wreck yeah yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you highlighted like uh my the woman's part, struggle with the woman's the struggle yeah, and yeah, then yeah. my part of like you know being a vet and feeling washed up and all those things you covered a lot of those elements yeah 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 uh, and uh yeah it, danny like he is danny's he, in the danny chat just he, in the he chat said right i love yeah. salima <laughs> i love Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Danny is like Danny. Just I feel like ju he's just started unpacking a lot of really? past trauma. Like during that time, during I that don't even think we knew anything oh. about yeah, Danny. Yeah. Like we didn't know anything about I mean, Danny. Yeah. Like, well, I think a lot of you guys are also starting to understand the importance of mental health. Yeah, and he's starting to go to therapy as well. Right, right, right. So I I just heard about mental health like three years ago. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, I, I was like, oh, what is like right. mental health? <laughs> The fuck? Health is health, right? What do you mean, mental health? Right. So yeah, it was uh, it was something. Danny different. should write a book or um, or write a film about his life. Yeah, Danny is sure. he's a mysterious man. Yeah, he's a very mysterious, a man. glorious. Um, mm -hmm. I wanna uh, just kind of uh, move on to what you're working on. Wait, wait, wait! Before we oh, finish okay, that, okay. I wanna say one more thing. Sure, go ahead. Bad rap was the most fun I've ever had making a film. Aww. It I was like I miss it. I don't, you know, I miss if Aww. I could have half as much fun making that film, like I'd be happy. And just like being able to be friends with you guys right. at the end of it. You know, a lot of people in my class made films about like prisoners who were in isolation right, and like right, right, right. the Gowanus Bay. And like I got to <laughs> chill with you guys. <laughs> Bad rappers. <laughs> I, I, I really do think in the end of the film, um, just looking at what that film was. It's such an interesting look into something like right. like a subcultural yeah. thing. Like, was, I am curious. Like, was there a point while you were editing or at the beginning where you were like, "Fuck, why did I make this decision to like interview them?" Like, was was there a time where you're like, "Fuck, should I pull out right now?" Hundred percent. And it was when <laughs> JK came came on. Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. J JK uh, was a producer on this project, yes. and he kind of helped glue the pieces of us together. Okay. And the reason why is it one, I have to be I'm being held accountable to somebody who has all, ha has his own ideas as mm -hmm. well, right? Mm -hmm. It was it was J Key's idea to do the um, executive pan have the executives watch you guys' stuff. Um, but before that, he was like, yo, we should do a game show. And, should, and I was yeah. like, whoa, right? <laughs> Maybe I'm not cut out for this. And oh, I think making wow. any document, well, for me anyway, and uh -huh. I feel like this is going to be the case till the day I die. Every documentary I've made, I felt like, fuck, why am I doing this? I got to stop. I got to I got to quit. This is not for me. I'm not good at it. Mm. Like, I, I'm not good. I cannot top the thing that I just yeah. did, right? It's a constant sense of not constant but a lot of times you'll have this imposter syndrome right yeah. true, even if lebron true. james is like yo i like your idea you yeah. still have the imposter syndrome you're For like sure. oh shit. and you i know? relate to that i think all creatives relate to that right a lot of us have imposter syndrome even especially when you're doing something really good mm. you start getting really insecure about you're like wait how the fuck am i gonna do this again mm -hmm. right. or even better right mm -hmm. that's no, scary For sure. documentaries are tough because like you 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 keep uh, adding pieces to it, and you need that like aha moment about what this documentary <laughs> is about. Is, you yeah. Know, yeah. about, and it gets frustrating <laughs> when you don't find it. Exactly. You want to give up towards the end, and then finally you might have that piece yeah. that brings it all together. And I felt like Bad Rap did such a good job of that. Incredible job. And then also one last thing. Sorry, is that you, you hold people's lives in your hand, right? True. Like yeah. I'm putting your shit out there. True. True. Like I'm taking your life, and I'm put. It's my responsibility. If I fuck that up, like yeah. I'm done out here. Yeah, yeah, like their careers. Yeah, uh -huh. for sure. Their, you know, before we move on to your next documentary, one thing I, I, I believe I like kind of like briefly said this to you when we were face to face in New York, but I wanted to really uh, just thank you so much because uh, before Bad Rap, I had like a whole other side of fans that knew me from my Christian music, from my church days, you know? And for a long time when I... Uh, shifted gears and started making more worldly music and you know kind of left the the church route behind uh a lot of people hate you know they had disdain for me because of that there was mm. bitterness there was 
you know, it's it does this thing like if you go to a church and then like let's say your praise leader like he does something that's kind of uh, off the cuff instead of being disappointed in that praise leader like people tend to hate him. There's like this wow. hatred that happens because you know you lead him to such a sacred place and then they they let you down so much mm. that there's this there's this like innate seed of bitterness towards this person and i had a lot of people that had that for me mm. but through bad rap through your narration um instead of me going out and trying to explain it or apologize to everyone as a whole the way that you captured mm. it and showing the human showing the duality of me trying to be a good person but also the weakness i have because i'm a human mm. the way that you captured that like you were talking about gift, like one of my biggest uh, viral, you know, hits back in the day in my Christian sense. And then right after that, with no transition, it's just me rolling roll a yeah. fat ass <laughs> J. It's like, it's like him holding the Bible yeah, and then I'm using it a, as a surface to I'm roll like, the joint. I'm literally holding a Bible <laughs> and then you, you cut the scene and then you're like, but it's hard to live it. <laughs> And it's just me with a fat ass J, and I'm just smoking with everybody. That was I just, the hardest. That was the hardest scene to make. Like, it, was it was crazy hard. because yeah. when I saw, you know, I saw my parents too. Yeah. And you know, that's like that one, you know, like that. You know, that nude scene's coming, so you're like, you're like bracing for it. My mom and dad started crying, and they were like, Rick, like, I, this is such a powerful part of the video because mm -hmm. we knew, mm -hmm. they knew, you mm -hmm. know. But you being this honest and what 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 I wanted to share with you, they were like, Rick, this is what ministry is about. Mm. This is what true ministry is, is letting people know that you, you know, it's a struggle. Not everybody's perfect. And she's like, I love Salima ah. for this. I love <laughs> oh, Salima. God. So I just wanted to let you know, like, it was kind of like, a, you know, like a Windex bottle, like instead of a jet stream, like it was like a spray and you did that you allowed that message in a spray way i sprayed it thank you so much do you know what i'm thank talking you. about like instead of yeah, me yeah. trying to like aim it and try yeah, to explain yeah, yeah. it like you sprayed it for Aww. me and uh, because of that video or because of that movie a lot of people a lot of my old fans mm. a lot of my old pastor friends hit me up was like rick man like it's very bold and very courageous wow. for you to do that and i was like dude you that didn't was tell a, me that i was that's like that's awesome it, it's, you know a, I mean? it's a lot of you know just looking at the time cap so it just really shows you how much that journey is the reward oh yeah mm. you know what i mean because i've thought about so much about where i should be and i'm like nah this is exactly where i'm supposed oh. to be you yeah. know and and with careers you can't think about like why you're not at this point or whatnot there's so many circumstances yeah. and and it, it, it's not like whatever idea you fantasize about being at it's yeah. it's not that that can never just just you yeah. can't work towards that really it's just like it's an element of everything can, you know? can i ask you a question yeah I, I always think about this you and i don't talk too often but i watch what you do right mm. and i always wonder to myself because i when we were filming you also were at like U ucb like you were doing mm -hmm. improv and mm. you know doing some acting i know you wanted to you know do some things um, I watch you and I see the things that you do and I'm, and I wonder, are you happy? Right. Are you happy with what you're doing? And it's not, it's not, not a lot of it is, is rap. Mm. Right. Um, I don't know what your dream was, but are you happy with what you're doing? I'm happy, but I'm, I, I'm still, I still have moments of unhappiness, I guess, because I tend to compare myself to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think it's because some of my closest friends are in the, the pinnacle of the industry mm -hmm. Thank it's you, not man. just have <laughs> <laughs> the rick is the number one praise leader in america um no but it's just it, it, it is rough being around some, sometimes like some of the top people in those fields and you've worked with them in a level where you came up together right yeah so it's like if you came up together why am i not up there with them yeah you know and so that part it gets in my head a little bit and it shouldn't because my friends are very supportive of me. You know what I mean? I'm talking, you know, obviously, you know, my yeah. people, my friends and stuff, but they're literally the, the peak, you know? Mm -hmm. And that part, I think, uh, it just makes me question myself more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like what did I do wrong? Yeah. And and it's not that, I'm like, I'm very gra grateful. That's what I'm doing. I'm practicing gratitude more than anything. Uh. I should, I gotta be grateful for like everything that, I, that I'm doing and I, I, I'm at. Right. But I think the problem is when you're young and you want to accomplish something in entertainment, you look at the pinnacle of things. Yeah. You don't think like, I'm going to be the sickest independent artist there ever was. <laughs> right. 
You're thinking like I'm gonna be a household name on every television screen, every billboard bus stop. For sure. You know, um, and I think those were the things I was striving for, which is I think something that every artist should change now. And yeah. I think I, I learned so I learned a lot of that. Damn. And I think now people can do that more because you look at YouTube and different platforms on how you accomplish like mm. what you want to do or share. Yeah, but I, I could still see kids st stuck on numbers. Obviously. Right, Absolutely. Right, right. Yeah. Let me, you yeah. guys. I, I maybe this happens to all of us because after bad rap, I'm looking at you. Have yeah. you in jail having these viral moments? Yeah. You were killing. I felt you know Aquafina was. Killing. I had a friend who did uh, Candyman. She directed Candyman. Right. And I'm you know I'm sitting here like um, what am I doing? Mm. Right. What am I doing? Yeah. I would like I was depressed. I was mm -hmm. right. I I talked to you, I, I wrote a script about um yep. these these girls who were going to a K-pop show, you know, we yep, were supposed yep, to work, yep. and it didn't happen, right. you know, and and then you were doing other shows. I saw like, you know, you yeah. were doing shows. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Why are all my friends doing so much and I'm not doing you shit? Felt that, right? You Hell felt yeah. that after that? Wow. Yes, are you kidding me? I didn't me? know that. Even with you, like I had, um, that was pre year the odds like that was yeah. ye that was that year. Wow, that was very difficult for me. Are you kidding me? Or did none. Yeah, and then sometimes guys would come to New York and be like. Is anyone want to come out? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was very difficult. But I, I say that to say, like, I imagine, and what I'm learning is that as a creative, we go through this shit. Yeah. Like, we go through it. Yeah. Um. And, and yeah. you know what? It's never gonna be enough. You got to really try to get your happiness mm -hmm. away from your career. Your career Backwards, is not yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, I gotta, I gotta get to that point where I'm completely happy because I don't think it's ever gonna be enough. You know mm. what I mean? I could reach the status that I think in my head is gonna bring me happiness. I don't think that's gonna that's be true. enough. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Damn. Therapy. <laughs> With all that energy, <laughs> therapy is what I need. <laughs> wow. I love, I love how this conversation went. That's, that's, that's a beautiful thing, man. I, I really didn't know you felt that way, Saliva. That was, uh. So how long has it been? So it's 2017. Bad rap came out, and now yeah. can we can we talk? Yeah, about yeah, this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me let can me we talk about this that just because since 2017, uh, like that was your first ever film project, right? What happens when everything dies down? <laughs> you do exactly. the film festival. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's on Netflix. Yeah. How do you restart the process, Great and question. what's your next? Yes. Thing? So after I was done with Bad Rap, I had hella ideas, right? I didn't have no management, no agents, anything. And then I got management. Just mm. some guys who were like, yo, we, you know, and they mm -hmm. were great. Um, and they were my only lifeline for the three years after that. Like, they were the ones getting me into doors. Otherwise, I would have just been like depressed. Mm. I would have been, I was getting for the first time rejected from certain things. I was getting rejected from, like, I was, I, I didn't want to do documentary anymore. I wanted to take some time off because bad rap I worked on for like four or five years. <laughs> yeah. I was wow, tired. Really? I was yeah. tired. Yeah. Holy shit. I did not want to do, a doc for a long time wow. so i started writing scripts and sending them in and for the first time i was getting rejected from shit yeah and i'm just like what am i gonna do mm. right yeah uh and because i have i had management who i thought were gonna drop me but they just kept saying hey it's gonna happen it's gonna happen yeah. um one of the first films that i pitched after bad rap was uh black wall street mm -hmm. um and when i pitched it it got like lukewarm Nobody was really fucking with it. They didn't get it. They sort of wanted me to change the idea. They didn't believe that it happened. Mm. This um, is scripted. No, this was not scripted. This, this is was Doc. Doc. This okay, is Doc. Doc yeah. Am I gonna like these are big name uh, broadcasters that right. should have put this shit on? Who yeah. have now put this shit on? Right. 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 Um, and so like I just thought, okay, I'm young. I'm stupid. You know, I don't know. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to see this story. So I just didn't do it for like a long while. Right. And then the, it wasn't George Floyd. It was, I think, it, a few years later, they found bodies in Tulsa. Um, mm -hmm. Or they, were fi they found graves. And mm -hmm. I was like, yo, that's that story that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this shit. Mm -hmm. I did the deck. I sent it to my managers. I was like, send it out. Just mm -hmm. send it out. And I think like two days later, Spring Hill came back and they were like, this is dope. That's it. However, wow. they didn't want, they didn't, they just say it's, they, they were just like, it's cool. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah,
give, give us that doc and let's see what we can do. Yeah. So it was because of pandemic, really, that they were on it for me. Mm, they were ready for awesome. me to just do yeah. do this. Very yeah. that that's uh, by the way, Spring Hill Productions is LeBron James's production company. Woo. Um, and I mean, that's I mean, Fire. the story is long overdue. So it's, uh, it's called Dreamland, Burnt, the Burning of Black Wall Street. Explain to us what Black Wall Street Great. was. Okay, so uh, Black Wall Street uh, was a place in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, that was like a, uh, it was called Greenwood. And it was a town, it was like this utopia, this black utopia. Yeah. Like when you think about it, um, like basically what had interested me was it's this place in the 1920s, right? Yeah. And like when I think of 1920s, it's like the roaring 20s, it's booming. Mm, right. Great Gatsby, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, chilling. <laughs> he was there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just beautiful, you know, but like we talk about the Great Gatsby, but we don't talk about the Black Gatsby. Mm, and that right. existed. Yeah. And that's beautiful too. Mm -hmm. Like I want to see us going to balls wow. and us, yeah. you know, driving nice cars with nice suits and having businesses that were beautiful from candy shops to hotels to automobile repair all that shit to see that it's almost like and i said this before it's almost like when i watched black panther and saw wakanda, wakanda. right wow. and that's just and i really feel like it's some juvenile stupid shit to say but it was like whoa we got that vibranium right we got <laughs> right, that vibranium right. and um, that's what green was. that's what green was <laughs> felt yo. like you know what i mean right and um, when people talk about Tulsa, they talk about the fact, or Greenwood, they talk about the fact that it was uh, burnt down to the ground mm. uh, by, you know, a neighboring white community that yeah. were less wealthy um, and jealous yeah. and came into that community and burned it down. People talk about that part. I want to, and I want to talk about that part because that's important. I need black people and white people to understand that Americans understand what happened, yeah. uh, but also for black people to see that beauty and be like, yo, we got that vibranium. Like mm -hmm. that's what I want people to, to feel. I, I I think it's such an important part of history to be told because <clears throat> things like that, neighborhoods like that, uh, it, it becomes the beginning of something, you know, that expands across right. the countries and, and mm -hmm. you know, and it's like Before it gets when you stop out. it mm -hmm. in the beginning stages of it, it just makes a huge impact for generations, right? right. Like generational wealth, that's real, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, Greenwood was not the only black town that was snuffed out. There was right. many right. black towns that were obliterated to the ground. That's and crazy. we're talking about like, this isn't, Tulsa was the oil capital of the world. Right. Not, not America, the world, right? You had there some of the richest people in the world, not America, in the world, in, the world. in Tulsa. Holy and, shit. Um, black people were eating off that in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And then they lost all that. So I'm saying like, People who are making millions of dollars uh, that they can no longer pass down to their children, that right. means a lot. That means a lot. That's fucking Right? No houses. These people had multiple houses that you could, you know, pass down to your children and your children's children. That doesn't exist anymore. So when right? we say burn down, like mm. Greenwood, it's a neighborhood. Yeah. This is arson. Like, mm. it, this is assault like this is everything this is everything. This is an attack on a wow yeah and so you... so if so for those who haven't watched the film um it is uh though the 19 1919 is when you guys ever heard of the red summer it was when the red summer happened Ooh. and the red summer was in the south pretty much a lot of lynchings a lot of okay. you know white people mm -hmm. just you know doing some fucked up shit mm -hmm. um and um around this time Fuck, I just lost my train of thought. I need to stop. 1919. 1919. Red, red, summer. red summer. White people. <clears throat> I, was, I was talking um, about it was just an attack on Greenwood. Like. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so so the way that it happened, the way that it started um, is, um, so there was this young boy named Dick Rowland. He was a black boy. He was a shoe shiner. And at that time, he couldn't use the, the restroom in the shoe shiner, so in the shoe shine shop. So he had to go across the street mm -hmm. uh, to a sort of like a retail store get on the elevator and go upstairs, use the mm -hmm. bathroom. This whole rigmarole, this whole thing to use the bathroom. Mm. Uh, and on the elevator is this young white girl who is the elevator operator. You have to like do this sort of thing to get it up. Right, right. And she has to line it up uh, correctly to the door. And I yeah. guess it's not, and he trips. Yeah. And he grabs her. I don't know if, you know, she felt oh. scared and she screams. Uh -huh. And it was Memorial Day, so it was uh, 
was kind of nobody was around but there was one store clerk who heard her scream mm. right and he runs out uh -huh. and from there the newspaper writes you know negro tries to you know rape girl uh -huh. oh. kind it's on of the thing. emmett till yeah. shit it was on that emmett till right. shit right. Right. oh my god and then from god. there white people across the, the you know the tracks who had already were feeling a type of way use right. this as an excuse they go to the courthouse they try to get him out try to lynch him black people come down there these are veterans right this right. is the first time that you know you have black veterans who know right. how to fight know how to use guns they're like we're not doing this anymore yeah y'all are about to y'all are gonna have to come and fight us yeah so they go down there and that's sort of when the clash begins but there's like two thousand white people wow. you know thousands of white people and then there's 75 black men wow. oh my gosh that's the red summer that well that's uh the uh that's after the red summer but it's like a few years yeah yeah wow. Yeah, uh, man. And um, how many days does this take course? So this, uh, it starts, it, it's a day and a half. Uh, and it's a sort of- A day and a half. A day and a half. They burned a the whole shit down a day yes. and a half. Uh, they it's came in, they looted. And I think one of the most effed up parts, they looted these people's things, and then they put them in internment, they put the black people in internment camps, right? For a, up to a year. And these people were not allowed out of the internment camps unless they're like, you know, white domestic, uh, you know, their boss came and said, hey, come out. Um, and they would sometimes see people wearing their shit. They would walk out, mm. they'd walk out, see a brooch and see, that's my grandmother's brooch that this white lady is wearing or my grandmother's coat that this, oh my this woman God. is wearing. And there's nothing you can do about that. Did right. we learn about this in high school, like in school? Because like I, I, I mean, I first of all, I don't remember a lot of school, mm -hmm. but like I don't even know if I really remember. They definitely didn't do this. <laughs> yeah, they well, definitely since, skimmed through this I mean, shit. Since last year, I, I, I realized there's so much about cultures Culture. that I just don't know. Other right. than you know, white perspective. You want to know what's the, even more f interesting to me? Yeah. Part of uh, how those black people got to Greenwood was because. Uh, they came on the Trail of Tears, and they came on the Trail of Tears as slaves, as Cherokee Choctaw slaves, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that they were owned by Native Americans in the five civilized tribes. That's what they call these five tribes. Um, mm. And I love, you know, when I was a kid, I remember a lot of black kids, you say, oh yeah, I'm half Cherokee. I'm half yeah, yeah. And it's like, what do you really know uh -huh. about history and right. about um, that time? It's very complicated. A lot of people come to me and say, oh, we didn't know uh, some Native Americans owned slaves. Yeah, you didn't know, you don't know history. I didn't know that shit either, oh, right? Uh -huh. So. Interesting. That's fucking crazy. I've, I've seen so many really good documentaries uh, since last year and I've, I've I've have it's piqued my interest I don't know if I cared that much about American history mm. until I realized how rich in culture it is right. I've been watching yeah. so many like even about Asian American do you watch Asian Americans like it's a the, 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 on the PBS, PBS, PBS right? one yeah. no, I haven't seen it How's I it? didn't know the first people like Asians it's to come Filipinos. here were Filipinos, Filipinos. Yeah, yeah. like that to me was I, mean, I, I, I think know in that America, they were the wild. first. They were the first in battle rap too to like do yeah. DJ. I mean, they're the originals. <laughs> of course, yeah. Of course, man. Uh, so Filipinos are the best. <laughs> All right. I, I wanted to um, ask you because just go, going back to the documentary, you know, doing a documentary on this topic is very difficult mm. because there's so much history that was burnt down literally during the event. And for generations, just wasn't passed down. So how do, how do you approach something like this where you find descendants, right? Mm. And they're coming at you telling you stories mm. maybe that they've just heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you're, you tell stories that you're not sure are true or not. Yeah. But again, that doesn't matter. Just the same way that like you saying what you said, it doesn't matter what you said. It's, it matters where it came from and mm. why you said it, mm. right? Um, so it doesn't matter, uh, you know, this is a story that's not been in history books. So a lot of the history comes from word of mouth, right? right? Mm -hmm. So some of it turns, some of it you don't know what's urban legend and what's not, right? But it doesn't matter. Right, it's right. them being able to tell the story. Like right. for example, one of the things that people say is that planes came down and shot bullets on them. Mm -hmm. Right, like this is what every survivor has said. History will tell you that didn't happen. Right, right. I don't know if you know. We don't know if it happened or not. But that this is what they experience is fucking planes. Uh, yeah. You know, coming down on them. Right. You you can't tell them any different, and exactly. you can't tell their descendants any different either. Um, so telling the story was hard because I wasn't sure I had to do a lot of research. Right. Um, and then two, everything was gone. Uh, a lot of stuff is gone. So I had to reimagine it. So I took that thing, the, the idea that I had no video, very little video and photos. Right. And I was like, I get to imagine this place. I get to create this place right. myself with the help of the stories that I've been told. And I get to take animation, which I've never done before in my life, mm -hmm. and like make it look pretty. 
and make it so look beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Well, when I think about history now, I think about it as it's storytelling. All of it, like none of it is real. It's always mm-hmm. from a perspective. It doesn't yeah. matter what yep. that's Someone thing else's was. account, right? Yeah, yeah someone right. else's account. Even if we all saw this thing happen where I, you know, flip this cup, it could have, all of us can tell that story very differently. For sure. So all of history is this way. Absolutely. And it's crazy to me. So in, in the in the essence, your documentary is really your perspective of your story. Absolutely. Which is fucking 100%. fire. 100%. I love that. Uh, Ed, and, you know, I think just the fact that i mean this is a good example of like what the country has been built on you know Mm. this event and many events and god knows what other events Mm -hmm. have not been uncovered and stories have been you know there's so many stories that have been untold you know Mm -hmm. um so i'm kind of excited to see more of that Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about like uh, I don't know how much time we have about sort of the token tokenism right mm. of hey you're Asian or you're black we want you to tell this story or hey we want you because <laughs> you are this right mm-hmm. I don't know if you've experienced that <clears throat> I, I mm-hmm. mean yeah but you know I, me personally a lot of the stuff I pitch um, I, I, I think a lot of Asian storytellers right now want to tell those stories because there haven't mm. been enough it's like it's like white people right white directors um what was um J, uh what's the harry potter um jk oh, rowley yeah, 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 yeah. you know motherfuckers are talking about dragons and wizards and all this shit <laughs> right. because they've got to tell all their yeah. stories right, right, right. you know black filmmakers asian mm-hmm. filmmakers yeah. we're talking about yes immigration stories you know <laughs> uh, you know slave stories like yeah, we have yeah. to get through those things right. totally and then to i get to the, get to the wizards <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. i want to i want to i'm tired of it too i, I agree. you know i think the black community you know i see it on twitter we're have, tired of it too it's got tired yeah. of all the, you know the, the, the past poverty trauma. porn yeah, the trauma poverty porn yeah, yeah, yeah. all that stuff but that's a choice that we're making also because i think of things like anime anime is not that's like all very creative yeah but that's also very asian like over there there. i'm talking about like african-american we're still stuck in the non-fiction section right now because we talk about a lot of the struggles that's going on right here are we trying to prove a point or something Mm. you think at some point are we just like no nah, it's not to prove a point it's just there's a lot of history that's been untold that we want to you know cover but there's going to be a point where people are going to get tired of it i think it's getting to that point yeah mm. Um, yeah, you know, with a lot is. of black people in America, right. they, tired you, you of could, they've gone tired of it. For sure. Mm-hmm. For Asians sure. were like kind of just beginning to get our stories out there, yeah. you know, like whether it's Minari and all yeah. that yeah. stuff. And but that's why you got some next level shit happening in different countries, you right. know, like mm-hmm. if you see Parasite and shit like that's some next level shit. For sure. I'm sure there's black filmmakers all, you know, outside of America mm-hmm. that's doing some crazy shit. Mm-hmm. True. You know, True. but over here, like there are the specific hyphen, whatever, Amer- uh, African-American, yeah. Asian-American stories that we got to get out the way yeah, before yeah. we can we can get into some wild shit. I hear that. Yo, that shit. I just it's fucking pissing me off. The fact that they'll burn a spot down destroy the history the generational wealth and also it's like you know you know how they say history is written by the victors right Mm -hmm. or the history is written by the ones that like lasted Mm -hmm. like there's people that still i still did not know about this shit like (laughs) well i think literally erased truth away from history i think the frustrating part is the well one you um one there's this feeling that black people for this film black people cannot make it financially in america or business wise but like no we we can right, right. like so there's that that and then also white people like or whoever it's not just slavery right it's mm. not just slavery thing it's not just civil rights a civil rights thing right yeah. there's so much more and i need y'all to see that and understand that yeah. right um in terms of like telling the same stories this this was not the f- only Dreamland was not the only yeah. film about Black Wall Street. Mm-hmm. There was like Russell Westbrook made one, mm-hmm. you know, Nat Geo made one, PBS. There was a ton. Mm-hmm. Oprah made one, mm-hmm. right? And like at first, I was kind of like, "Fuck, man, mm-hmm. I got to compete with all these people." Mm-hmm. But like, bro, how many stories about whatever thing have they told? about white history over and over again have <laughs> right. we seen, 100%. right? Like, so many times, like, I'm down. Part of me is like, yo, I don't want to see this, like, trauma. Part of me is like, yo, let's get it out the way and, like, let's tell every side of it from mad different directors. Uh-huh. And, like, let's let's tell the story uh-huh. as many times, right? Like That's they do. That's crazy. I mean, That's yeah, cool. and people, I feel like, you uh-huh. know, always need a reminder 
that this is what America is. is. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah, sure. we always forget uh, up and down. But um, I wish there was a balance too, that there was other <clears throat> shit. Is, I mean, there 100%. will be. I think we're I think we we're, we're yeah. getting there. Give, yeah. me, give me an example of like what was going on in in, on, in Black Wall Street and Greenwood yeah. far as the, the wealth that was being generated. I mean, was there a, <laughs> such a prominent Black American there mm. that like this was like, you know, something happened and it should got outrageous. Like he had power to be like. Yeah, great question. One, it was like, there was this whole thing where there were um, the slaves of the Native Americans. Uh, after the Civil War, they were given land like not the black free not the freed black slaves of america but the freed black slaves of the native americans were right. given 160 acres each oh, right wow. so now you have land land is power uh -huh. period uh -huh. get some get your property up land is power and For these sure. people had 160 acres that's man woman child everybody Damn. right um and then they found oil there mm. right uh -huh. um so sorry where was that going what was the question so we're saying like like yeah the level of like oh, okay, know, so, prominent okay or, so well. so in Oklahoma you had a bunch of just like sort of rich black people and then you had one guy named O W Gurley who just bought up a ton of land and started mm -hmm. selling that land only to black people mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so he's like yo let's make this let's make wow. it poppin mm -hmm. right that's something I, I like I don't know what I take from that but I take something from that mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. you see this picture with him and some other black men who I like to call the blue chip blacks. Mm. They're the ones who had the money lending it out to black people mm. and saying, yo, like, let's get it popping. That's dope. That's mm -hmm. fucking sick. Yeah. That's, that's... My dumb ass thought Black Wall Street was just the game's record label. <laughs> like, I didn't realize. I mean, a lot, to be honest, a lot of cats pop because I remember when get the game yeah. called its crew Black Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many cats probably knew the no, history, for to be sure. honest. That's the name. crazy, man. That's why we need it every year. We need a documentary every year on this joint. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. But the timing of it, too, I think is a great time right mm. now for people really would want to watch this even more since the pandemic. But that, and that's the like, thing about these things. Personally, some, I think timing was. That's the thing about these things sometimes I don't like is mm -hmm. when companies want to jump on stuff when things mm -hmm. are happening. That's what she was saying. She was like, yo, these big ass names now that mm -hmm. it's cool. I mean, I'm not mad because they're reaching out <clears throat> to me too. But yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, like this stuff that we could, that could have been done years ago. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and also, I did get a couple of those calls, and I'm sure you get these where it's like people who told you to your face mm. some shit call you, and, and you know, you're a superstar. Hey, superstar. Right. Uh, superstar. <laughs> Didn't you just tell me I wasn't worth a certain thing? Uh, right, like, how right, am I right. You know that. I don't that know. 180 you, switch. That, yeah, that's oh, that's not the man. greatest. Not, actually, it is good. I like that. I, love I mean, it. inclusivity. <laughs> yeah, people were not talking about inclusivity. Mm. Uh, you know, I feel like no. you know, even five, ten years ago, like I don't, I, I don't remember. You know how I know these things because that word gets thrown around so much now. Yeah, uh. during that time, even when we we're making the doc, yeah. like I don't think I even heard that fucking word. <laughs> I've heard exclusive. <laughs> I never heard inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> never heard it, right? Like, it was all about exclusivity. For sure. For I sure. never was hearing inclusive <laughs> For around. Sure. That's just <laughs> hilarious. Um, so that's man, amazing. That's well, so the, um, the, uh, Dreamland, the burning of Black Wall Street, uh, was Sick. played on CNN. It premiered on CNN about two weeks ago. Yeah, I think it's on CNN now, or but it's going to be on HBO Max pretty soon if it's not already. Woo! Fuck, yeah. Make sure you go watch it. So it's, it's, I think, like, amazing. is it two hours, two and a half hours? Uh, an hour and a half. Hour and a half, hour and a half. Yeah. Hour and a half. Yeah. Um, it's it's a wild story. And I, I like that analogy you made about, like, Wakanda. Yeah. You know, it sounds silly, but no, that's what it was. It was. Like, uh, you know, um, yeah, go watch it. <laughs> uh, what? Okay, so, okay. It, Where can it premiered find me? in CNN. I uh, see. I uh, premiered on CNN. Yeah. It's gonna be on HBO Max. Yeah. What happens now for you? <laughs> after this now? years of Reset. journey you had after bad rap, yeah. being like, I don't want to make another doc. You make yeah. another doc, and yeah. that's a very difficult doc to make. Now what? Um, I get the opportunity and privilege to choose from a lot of different docs. Right. Mm -hmm. My agents are at WME. That's great. So. I have, uh, I'm in talks about a bunch of different things, but one, one st story that I want to do, I don't even know if I'm, I should be even talking about this, but I want to do internet. I want to do an internet story, okay. right? Yeah. That's, Ooh, uh, and, and, and I have a couple of the internet stories that I really want to do specifically about, let's say like nineties internet. 
Um, there's a specific uh, figure from the 90s who nobody really knows about, but she like spawned the entire uh, video age that we're in. Mm. She was the first video influencer, you know, first person to put her her camera on and let people watch her. I oh, wow. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I <Carly. laughs> That was 2000, sorry. But, but like back in those days, it wasn't video. It was uh, like a photo every five minutes, right. a photo every 30 minutes. And like you had guys jerking off to that, mm. right? Like, so I want to explore uh, early internet stuff. That's interesting. Yeah, Rex yeah. gonna chime in right about now. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually... Uh, <laughs> um, that's fucking that, That's interesting. I, I can't wait for that. Um, I, I, and I think we're uh we've we've uh we're in the time where we can do a doc about the internet yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we've yeah, been yeah, in the yeah. internet for quite a while <laughs> now a bit, um, man do you have any docs you recommend for us to watch or anything that you've recently seen um i my favorite do oh man not even doc just like my been watching my favorite docs right? are the sports docs like the 30 for 30s because they're never about the sport yeah they're always yeah, about like yeah, something yeah. else my favorite uh 30 for 30 is this one about I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's about his name Steve Bartleman. The the he's he's a Chica he was a Chicago Cubs fan who like they're supposed to win the World Series or something, and he, and he like it, he tries right? to catch the ball, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And he's like hated, and as he's fuck. hated yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> forever yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And he becomes the scapegoat for why mm. Chicago never won the wow. World Series. <laughs> and it's such a good. It's not about the World Series. Yeah. It's about this man, right? I so, love that. I love that shit. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite documentaries is uh, the King of Kong. I haven't seen King of Kong. One of my favorite. People call it one of the best documentaries of all time. I got to watch it. Because it, it plays out like a real movie, like a scripted movie. Oh, shit. It's about video games, right? Yeah, there's the heel, the villain, oh, wait, the is that hero. The, the guy, the, the... These, these two old fools who play Donkey Kong and like <laughs> beef it. But this That's guy awesome. who's been like the champ for hella long and a right, new right. guy comes in. Right. And there's like okay. sabotage and things like oh, that. It's so shit. fucking good. And obviously one of the classics is Crumb. Uh, based oh, yeah. on Robert Crumb, yeah, Robert Crumb. Mm -hmm. and that's considered uh, one of the top documentaries too. Um, I used to be, a, you know, I, I made a documentary when I was uh, 13 years old. Did you? Yeah, I what? was. I was. I used to go to a youth center that encouraged like filmmaking, and I, I, I don't know if I told you, I wanted to be a filmmaker before I rapped or anything. Mm. No, you never told me. Yeah, I, 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 I used to. I used to be the weird kid with the camcorder all you the time. You never saw that. Old high. He told me that about tapes. acting too. This is documentary. Good rap. <laughs> no, no, no. I was really, I was <laughs> really into document. I was really into documentary film, yeah. and when I was thirteen, I made, I made a short documentary on, on like. Um, the it's like graffiti and in this neighborhood in South Central and um I'll show it to you one day. I, you know, I you have, have it for that's that's what I'd like to see. NFT. I have baby photos. I have your baby photos. Uh I forgot to bring them. I'm supposed to bring them today. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, the actual physical yeah, copies. The physical copies of what your the fuck? baby photos. How come photos? you never returned it? <laughs> I <don't forget. laughs> They're like really special photos as well. Like I don't know why you don't have them. Sorry, I'll bring them. Now I can't tell my history. <laughs> just now because I can't tell my history. Salima came here and took my baby photos. Okay. That's oh my god. Um, but yeah, that's I just I didn't know you had that. So please, uh, you live in LA now. So. Um, yeah, but uh, documentary is something yeah. I really wanted to do. But so I know how much work it goes mm. into it, and so much yeah. research, and so much uh, it's it's draining. Mm. Salima, we fucking love you, man. I love you too. Um, I want to take some calls from the people out there. Are those what I think they are? What? Yeah, yeah, we got a PO box Ooh. situation. We'll go through. But I want to take some calls and any questions for Salima Kroma here, filmmaker, uh, director of Bad Rap. Uh, Dreamland, the burning of Black Wall Street. Any questions you might have, please call in. We got a lot of smart people in our community. <laughs> Uh, very curious people in yeah. our community. So call on our Discord right now. Ask away some questions. You know, I, I want I want to hear from you guys on what you think. And if you've even seen the documentary, either one. And if you have any burning questions, um, hit us up. Release your doc. We have a lot of loyal fans up in the chat. Rip City said this is one of the best guests in the pod yeah. for sure. Hell wow. yeah. Oh, Thank you. Have you been doing a lot of pods or interviews? Mm, uh, pods, no. I've been doing panels with yeah. like like people like Don Lemon, you know, so yeah. I have to be, I can't say shit. She I just, she just did, person, she, yeah, right? that, <laughs> she just did Trevor Noah uh, Daily Show. Yeah. Oh, wow. that was fun. Yeah. So the, I think like. Uh, <laughs> All of us, wow. I, oh, <laughs> like a couple nights before I saw. Trevor Noah breaks up with girlfriend, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he 
<laughs> so like, wait, did you have a crush on Trevor Noah or what? Huh? Did you have a crush on him? Like, you just no, did... I've never had a crush on him. You I never just... thought he was like cute or anything? He's a no, good looking dude. He's a good looking yeah. guy. Like he's definitely husband. Yeah. yeah. He looks material. surprised all the time. And he's so gracious and he, t- he talks like this with a, with a lisp, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. so it's so nice. Uh, he's gracious and yeah, he was cool. He was great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw the interview. Did and you? Yeah, you tweeted it. Thank you. You love me. I was you proud. support me. I was like, dude, what the fuck? Aww. Like, cause I'm not gonna. Like, you told me about the documentary a while ago, and then it just kind of got sprung up. I saw the, you know, the trailer for it come out, and I was like, oh shit, it's this out. is it. Yeah, it's this happening. is it. It's and I started seeing you all over the yeah. place doing interviews. So I was definitely proud, and just good to see you go from like. Bad Rap, Tribeca, Indie Circuit, to this big production yeah. that's going to be on CNN. LeBron Such an King. important project because yeah, I know you have to just for five years think about Korean rappers. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm happy for you. Yeah. <laughs> you can move on now, Salima. You can move on. Um, you know, Salima uh, went to we went to Korea together. Oh yeah. Uh, when Bad Rap uh, premiered wow. out in Korea, that yeah. was so fun. And I remember Salima was really mad one night because me and Jay Key was hanging out with all these Korean rappers and yeah. R- uh, big, we hit her up. big R&B singers. And so I, it was Jay Key's responsibility. Right, 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 right. right. Jay Key didn't hit up Salima, who's a fan you know, of all these Korean yeah, artists. Yeah, no, Jay Key, she was, she's a fan of all these artists we're yeah, hanging out with, I having know. drinks with. Who were there? Who was there? It was like Zion T. Oh! Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and, then, and then Salima was like, how the fuck you not yeah, invite me to this for thing? For sure. And you know, Jay Key is like, yeah. I feel like he has a Korean friends. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when he's out there, he's like, let me do my own yeah, thing because they yeah. love me. I'm the Korean American <laughs> plug to them, you know. And so, <laughs> so like, he doesn't sound like that. He doesn't sound like that. No, he does That's not. That's my impersonation of everybody. He's like, I'm Salima. Listen to me. I have documentaries. Uh, <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I, I, I'm not. Oh, imper- wow. I'm not impersonation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can do a lot of things. Impersonations yeah. is not one of them. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she was really mad about that. I but was, yeah. how was your experience in Korea? Did you have fun? Oh, I had so much fun. We were there for like a week or something like that. Yeah. But the thing is, they put us up in like a hotel that I thought was I don't know what's it called, a sex hotel, like a love motel, a love motel, oh, yeah. right? Um, which I didn't love. And so I got an Airbnb and right. that shit was nice. The floors were warm. The yeah. place was, and that was at the time there were mad protests for, oh, yeah. for uh, you know, the president. So like, I'd see it outside my, um, my, my window, but people were mad nice. I had, I, I was wearing like a, an African head wrap mm-hmm. and I had a bunch of like Korean older men come to me. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. <laughs> right, 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 right. And I, I, got, I just got mad love when I went out there. That's what's up. Awesome. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask because I totally forgot. Like, what was the reception of bad rap out there? Oh man! So in America, <laughs> you hear people laugh. Yeah. They the cue. I know every cue. Exactly. You go to Korea, they're laughing in their heart. <laughs> like they don't laugh out loud For at all. Sure. I was so I thought they didn't like the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like sitting there. <laughs> but I remember <laughs> afterwards some of my Korean friends talking to me about it they and showing it. me love and didn't didn't realize that it, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so you got that Korean rappers get love. <laughs> <laughs> Really? All the Korean rappers here get love. We all love the Korean. I don't know why that's my impersonation. They love Korean. Like, my impersonation of Koreans is way more racist than any other. Why than are they Russian? No, it's, it's true. What? It's Korean true. rappers don't get endorsement deals and branding deals? Oh, Korean rappers get treated like kings. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> god, dude! Uh, yeah. So, I so what, 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 what was the? They, they loved it. No, they, they did, really right? fucked yeah. with it. I, I, you know, because it's rap, it's puns. Your whole battle rap scene. I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah. I still am not sure how they felt about that, uh, and even the subtitles. I'm not sure what the subtitles said. Right? Subtitles was good. They were good. It was very good. Our go- our Chloe did those subtitles. Yeah. She was yeah. great. Um, but the reception was great. It was at a theater. The first time I seen my film in a theater with mm. the whole ticker. Uh, yeah, um, that's true. That was great. You were there. You really helped out a lot. Yeah. Cause I couldn't speak Korean. I couldn't understand. I mean, in America, it was like people loved it. And there was like definitely like a reciprocation and laughter and all that because, you know, it's familiarity. But in Korea, it was like a it was like a foreign reverence. You know what I mean? Like mm. they didn't they didn't understand uh, the, the plight that we had. Wait, wait. Why wasn't I not there? 
Yeah, why weren't you there? Because I was in Korea. Yeah. yeah. Was I wasn't at the, at the premiere or screening. Yeah. And everyone was at the premiere. Like, Why wasn't I there? Now I feel shitty. There must no, have no, been No, no, no. You were. You were at the premiere. We have photos. I was. You, we okay, have okay, photos. okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, because I sure. thought, I was like, why would I have You were absolutely that? at the premiere. Maybe I, there was multiple, right? I must, I must yeah, have missed were, one or two. Or yeah, 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 yeah. How many CGVs could we go? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many CGVs? There were three. You did one. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah, I just remember like a lot of the people did go see it in the scene. You right. know, rappers and, and friends in, in the subculture scene are there. And, yeah. and they were like, they they told me like they felt for me and shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, they I mean, did? they were showing me mad love. They were really? like, respect. No, <laughs> respect. <her. Yeah. laughs> respect. Respect. <laughs> yeah. Really? No, I didn't know sure. that. No, they they showed me mad respect. I think I think the battle part really resonated with them. They're like, oh, respect on really? the, the battle part. Yeah. Did you yeah. feel like you were complaining? Uh, you mean what do you mean? Just in general, throughout the documentary? Yeah, and in the battle, re- the battle scene part, because that was a, you. You were a bit rusty. You said it. You were a bit rusty. I, I felt like I, I I was complaining about where I should be in my That's, life. Uh, but, but here, but here's the thing. I, I just want to finish. No, no, sorry, no, I don't no, please, interrupt. no, I'm sorry. I think people think about it as complaining and that I'm not grateful for where I am. But the truth is, even at that point, like I've been, in, I was in the game. You know what I mean? Like I've been in the game doing my thing. Yeah. And so I think people who have been pursuing for a long time, yeah, they have expectations of maybe where they should be in their career. It mm-hmm. wasn't like I wasn't grateful. Like yeah. I felt like I was paying dues. Like yeah. I was out here paying. You did. You felt I that was way. paying dues for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I still feel that way that yeah. I paid dues. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think any could anyone could take my take that away from me. You know, I have accolades, you know, mm. and, and what I've done. It's okay. It's okay to want to you know, ex- expect more from your career. Or what do you, you do? You feel like you want to do? Do you want to? Do you still expect that for your rap career? Nah, I think I think I'm a lot older, and I have different aspirations and what I want yeah. to do. You know, and I respect rap so much that I know if it's something that you don't do 100, percent you mm. got you're gonna get the results that you're gonna see it in your career. What yeah. do you want to do? Yesterday, can I say yesterday yeah. he went up at the Hollywood Improv. Oh, Joe Coy. And he opened oh. for Joe, Joe Coy. Joe Coy did a show um yeah. last minute. I was there? Yeah. I was there. Joe Coy did a it. show last minute and he was like, "You want to like do a, a, a set in the beginning, open up." So I go over there and I'm like nervous as fuck, but like I do my set, do my thing with like three other of his homies. So he just invited King a couple Batch of homies. Batch was there. He yeah. opened and then he couple went of after. homies and then this fool goes up and Joe does four hours on stage, like just riffing, three hours testing, of riffing. On, testing on material, Jill. riffing. Yeah, and yeah. the last hour, Tiffany Haddish comes up and they're on that uh, stage for an hour, hour and a half, just roasting people. Wow. Having, and just riffing back and Haddish forth. Haddish was there too? Yeah. And wow. dude, it was four was hours crazy. of like, they killed it. Wow. I, it was like for me, it more than just was... me being able to open up, I really soaked up a lot of game. Oh. And one thing that he said really resonated with me was about, how what he learned is not just oh like oh, making people laugh all the time it's like when you have the crowd mm. is when the dead silent Ooh. and to be able to live in that silence wow and be okay with it it's a dave Chappelle. and i and yeah. then i feel like he's so right about that mm. because i remember when i did my ted talk i wanted to try to do like punchlines right uh. and every time it just more quiet it was the whole way through i was like <laughs> fucking like dying up there right i was like why can't i get a reaction uh. but the truth is people don't go to ted talk for punchlines uh. no they're waiting for the whole you yeah. know whatever it's gonna be 10 to 20 minutes of you just talking up right. there and you they did a ted talk when was this? You clearly yeah. didn't do your research before hopping on here. That's okay. We didn't either. <laughs> this guy thought Black Wall Street was the games crew, obviously, before you hopped on. Like, oh, she's going to talk to us about the games documentary. <laughs> Should be interesting. I didn't know they had a history. No, he, did, um, he, did, he did a TED Talk. It was, it was amazing. Uh, but yeah, I, I did a I TED Talk. That. It was just about battle rap and what battle rap taught me about me and my roots and how what people's perception of Asian people was. Right. And, and when, was like this? when was it? Uh, this came two years ago. It was right before oh. the pandemic came out. Oh my gosh! I have to see this. Please send yeah. me a link. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link. It's yeah. I'm not gonna lie. My presentation was not, not great because I was really nervous. I'd never done anything like this where it's not a comedy okay. set or or a battle rap yeah, or yeah. there's right. no beat. It's just me talking, and I just had to. <laughs> Hi. I lost oh. a lot of weight actually. <laughs> I think I lost weight on my face, yo. I, 
<laughs> I realized I gotta stop wearing beanies when there's black uh, black uh, backgrounds. Because it just looks like my you have your face, my body. How the fuck oh did that God. happen, dude? I was like, <laughs> this pink sweater will get him. Oh Yo, Alex, you could have picked any other. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ! Man. Yes, like, uh, yes. Tell him. Bottle of Pepto Bismol up there. Um, but yeah, it was great. I I thought it was great, yeah. but. I definitely the so public the speaking silence? is a whole how, other thing. How do you get the silence? It's not getting it, well. No, what he what Joe Coy was saying is like when you, when it's silent, like they're listening. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean. They're not lost in anything. They're, they you have a hundred percent of their attention. You right. know, and it's what you do with that and. And it's like Chappelle, right? Like he, he goes on these rants, and it's not about all the laughs sometimes, but yeah. everyone's glued. Yeah. Like your ears are glued. The captivation, to it. bro. And it's like being okay with that. And when it's when you're okay with it, you could really get into the yeah, story. Does that come from being Dave Chappelle? You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it become it becomes like when you become a master storyteller. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, you know. But uh, you have that. Yesterday when I watched you, I felt like there were parts there. You know, you're a good storyteller, so there's like there you'll hear silence, right? Right. Mm. But he's usually trying to like fill it in, or mm. yeah, something like that mm. instead. But I feel like uh, people, you command attention. People are there to listen, and you could see people kind of like, mm. yeah, right, they like, right. they, I mean, I, I come into the game very humbly, respectfully. You know, I know there's so many people who've been doing this for years, and I, I'm given this opportunity probably because I'm also a rapper coming from that game a little bit easier just to get a slot like mm -hmm. that. So trust me, I know there's so much I have to work right. on. Even yesterday was like a very good experience for me to soak in that game and know like kind of where i'm at right because it wasn't like there was like four or five openers that were all his homies and they all did better than me mm. i can truly say that mm. Mm. so you want to do stand up that's your goal or you want to do uh, it all? i want to do it all stand up is, is something that i love because I'm, a, I'm i've been a fan of stand up before rap, all that, and I, I feel like I've implemented sure. elements of stand up and everything we, that I've done. I've definitely heard you talk sure. very well about stand up. Um, but it's one of those things I love because it, it makes me feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and I haven't felt that way in a long time. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't felt nervous and and uncomfortable on that le on that level True. in a True. long time. So it's refreshing when I get those butterflies. I'm shit and bricks right, you know right, right. and i go on stage and i'm getting flushed things mm. don't work i love it yeah because think about it, like you know at this point of as course, a rapper like course. what's gonna work right? right 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 even bits like that i've done between songs when i perform like i know right, all the bits right, that right, are gonna right, work right, right, i've done right, it for right. years <laughs> i'm sure all the people who watch it <laughs> got to a show or two i've heard some of my bits <laughs> y'all not ready <laughs> and there's comedians who do the same bits for years too yeah. and sometimes oh, they on, get comfortable dude. because they know what works all the time but how do you grow from that uh -huh. you're not gonna grow to bring that discomfort back. I'm mm. trying to bring that discomfort back. No, it's huge. That man. diarrhea feeling. That diarrhea mm. feeling, yeah. baby. Um, Should we get some callers in there? Yeah, let's get some callers. Let's start with Jamel Boogie, DJ Amel. You're on the air, Boogie. What's good, Bug? Hello? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself? Can you unmute yourself? Okay. Yeah, what up? We'll, what we'll up? Come back. All right. Oh, here he is. Boogie, what's up? What's good? What's up, man? I'm I'm chilling. I'm about to go to work. Just uh, I always catch the the like podcast version on Spotify. So I I, I had time today, and I got the I just got caffeine. So I was like, I, I better catch them on time. Nice but, man. You got any questions for us? A lot, <laughs> but uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> got a lot of time to ask them. So, um, like. Salima, when when was the first time you heard about Tulsa? Because I like heard about it maybe like a year ago. I graduated high school in 2018. I never heard about it. And uh, I was just like on Instagram one day and one of those like ads about like growing your wealth comes up and I'm like, what is this? And they started talking about like, I think it was an independent like a uh, uh, documentary or something like that. Mm. Yeah, when did you hear about it? Um, first time I heard about it was in college. So I went to UCLA and took this uh, African American studies course. Uh, and it was the one section of it was about black towns, right? And I was like, black towns? What the fuck is a black town, right? Um, <laughs> in the like early 1900s, where they had their <clears throat> own sort of communities oh, and their uh, country clubs. And so it was like, I had to go to college. I had to take this particular class and I had to read the book that was assigned yeah. for me to learn about this. So, and this was like, what, 10, uh, 10 years ago, right. uh, 12 years ago? 
Uh, so that's when I first learned about it. But you're not going to hear about it in high school, not even if you're in Oklahoma, not even if you're in Tulsa. So, yeah, you're probably not going to hear about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. It's it's so it's wild, wild, you know, when that's when so we weird. hear that, it's so new to people, like, that something like that could have existed mm -hmm. because of our history of this country, yeah. of black people being enslaved and all that. So when you hear about it, like, that's why when you saw Wak Wakanda, mm -hmm. it was like, look at this uh, fantasy yes, world. Yes, that, no, that's black exactly. people thriving. <laughs> yes. And that just tells you what it does, and it, and think about what that could have done, right? Yeah. Because just inspiration alone yes. makes people do crazy things. Hundred percent. Hundred Like I'm thinking about uh, J. B. Stratford, the dude who owned Mad Hotels, right? So many homes, and I'm like, why? Haven't, why haven't I heard the name Stratford in a rap lyric? No, <laughs> you know what I mean? Never. Why do I keep we hearing hear Trump? Trump. <laughs> you know, but we yeah. don't hear Stratford. Damn. We don't hear about That's girlies, a real right? Shit. right? Wow. Like, I want to hear that, bro. And Stratford rhymes with a lot of things, too, right. really well. Get the Come Stratford. On. Yeah. <laughs> Get the Stratford. Get the Stratford. Get the Stratford. Stratford. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just like, that's wild. That is wild, though. Like, yeah. um, Damn. yeah, yeah. No, that was a good question, but you, yeah, uh, you got anything else first before you move on? Uh, No, I just want to say I've, I've been a... I, I haven't been like active on listening to music, but I like found out about you like years ago. Like when I was, I'm always really like looking to like listen to new artists. And so like, that's just been what I do all the time. Like, um, and like you popped up and I was like, oh shit, like he's done some other shit now. Like you're, I, I think probably, it was probably like 2013, 2014, about the time that I got a phone. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to like commend you. you doing some good shit. Thank you, bro. Thank yeah. you, man. And that, you must have been in like middle school then or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, I was like eighth grade, like right after I like got out of the like MP3 player space. Wow. That's what's Yo, up, Boogie, man. thanks for calling in today, Thank baby. Boogie, Appreciate though. that. We got yeah. uh, Mandu Madness. Mandu Madness, which was Rick's old screen. Yo, game, chill I the fuck out. Uh, <laughs> what's up, buddy? Mandu Madness, please don't fail us. I need to talk to you. That thing muted. Mm. We here? Oh, oh yeah. Yep. Hello? We're good. We're hey, good. We hear you. There we go. Hey. Hi, guys. I'm so nervous. Oh, you're hey. good. Aww. You're good. Uh, Don't be nervous. I, I watch your podcast like uh, religiously, <laughs> and my friend put me on. Her do you name's Alexis. On YouTube, or are you listen? Yeah, to I, that's a good question. How do you listen? Do you listen to our podcast, or do you watch the YouTube videos? Uh, I mostly listen to it on Spotify. Yes. Sick. Wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> so sick. I'm really trying to get a gauge on this. <laughs> yeah, so this, is this is my first time catching. Awesome. Awesome. What's up, Mandu? I okay. didn't catch um, a lot of it. I got some of it, but uh, I, I really appreciate the conversation yeah, that you no, guys are having right now. Yeah, no, thank you to Salima. Um, Not Korean. I'm just going to say that right now, just off top. Oh, it's, we, we play this uh, the very problematic game sometimes. <laughs> well, it's become a thing because people uh -huh. at, like, we're not even trying to do it, but yeah. people yeah. call in now and be like, Oh, like let's can we play Minority Report, which is the game we created, and you guess what yeah, yeah. the ethnicity of the caller is. What is the what's the demographic been? It's been very mixed. It's, it's been very, very mixed. Really? It's every every demographic. Yeah. Okay. Mandu Manis, do you mind if we play a quick round of Minority Report with you? Oh uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, where are you calling in from? Uh, from Texas. From Texas. <laughs> all right, all right. Can you say the sentence, please? Everybody, uh, tune into HBO Max to watch Salima's new movie. Uh, everybody tune in. What was the other one? Everybody tune in to HBO Max to watch Salima's new movie. Everyone tune in to HBO Max to see Salima's new movie. Salima's new good. movie. That's good. Latina. That's good. Bad enough. Yeah. Yo, that's, that's Latina right there. Straight Latina? Up. 100%. Not Korean, Where is she though. From? She's from Texas. I'm, I'm going to say Latina, too. Uh, I want to say, like, uh, kind of like Filipino or something. Mm. Okay. I say light skin or black. Light skin, light skin black? black? All right, I was there too. Wow, Why do where you at? That's specific. All right. Yeah, yeah that was right. Black. Wow. <laughs> okay, Wait, cool. Light skin black or, you know. Yeah. My I'm black. Like me. <laughs> like me? Okay, so yeah, uh, it's like. like yeah. Yeah. She got it. Uh, she got it. Yeah, okay, we'll give you that cool. one. Cool. Thanks for calling in. Fire.
Uh, wait, no, wait. Did, did she? No, no, no. Yeah. Ask? Please. Did she ask anything? Did you can ask a question. Do you want to ask anything, Mandu? Uh, oh. No, I just want to say thank you for having this conversation, and I'm uh, and thank you for doing this co uh, podcast. And also, can you shout out to, uh, to my best friend that introduced me to you guys? Yeah, of what's course. your best friend's name? Yeah, I love her. her name's Alexis Simpson. Alexis Simpson was good, <laughs> inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Inclusive. <laughs> Inclusive. <laughs> yeah, shout out Alexis. Uh, thank you for putting Mandu Madness on. Yeah. Mandu, thank you Bye. so much for calling thank in. You. Appreciate you. Yido. Yido. Inclusive. <laughs> Yido. Hello. What's good, bro? Hi. Hey. Uh, that life's good. How about you guys? I'm good. good. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm Hi, Yido. Right. Energized. <laughs> That's good. Sorry, I feel like I brought the energy way down. But um, uh, I just wanted to ask. Um, we were talking about like, you know, uh, bad rap earlier on, and like, Korean hip hop in general. And I was wondering if any of you guys had like, uh, pet peeve, like one pet peeve, or like maybe it's not a pet peeve, maybe it's a major problem with Korean hip hop. Like one person each, maybe could be like, this a is probably pet something peeve. that's problematic in Korean hip hop. Um, I know this is a hot topic these days. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, about Korean hip hop. And I mean, it's been a topic for a very long time. Um, I mean, we obviously know uh, all the stuff going on with with uh, Jay Park and that video and TikTok. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't. So why don't you I tell don't. me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you no, no, no. Know. I don't you know. know. I'm know. out the loop of everything. I've heard a little bit. Yeah. Don't You don't have to say it because I know. Well, you know, like, well, you, you can obviously know what the topic probably yeah. might be, right? That's it's what probably I mean. uh, appropriation, appropriation, which is a conversation yes. right. that's been going on for ages. Um you said so the pet peeve the pet peeve of it yeah like there's a lot of pet peeves there's like and there is a pro if you want to talk about appropriation is like yes shit go it goes down there right mm -hmm. um i i think jay is one of those guys that like he's he knows what's up yeah he's mm -hmm. not a stupid dude but not at all. i think the video that he just put out yes i can see how that's going to be looked at as problematic because i'm sorry you guys we have to you have to tell me what oh video? okay so so oh, he has sure. a he has a music video um, where he does a posse cut with all the up and coming Korean rappers, mm. and there's like Korean American or Korean rappers, Korean Korean rappers, okay. and it's like thirty like Korean rappers. Stop. Yeah, it lo it looks like crazy, right? But then eighty percent have like you know braids, cornrows, oh, and you know oh, froze oh. afros. Mm. And here's the thing, yeah, and the, yeah, the, yeah. and the reason, and let me tell you this because um you know. Uh, hold, on, hold on, yeah, you can, let me just say the statement first, Alex, before you put the video on or whatnot. Yeah, okay, okay. Sort of. Yeah, I just want to say that because this is a video where he wanted to just, you know, put on all the up and coming uh, yeah, yeah. Korean it's rappers. Yeah, like a roster flex. Yeah, he, he just wants to put out all the up and coming Korean rappers, you know, show them some love. Yeah. But 80% of them happen to have those, oh. ha these hairstyles, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh. And I think the bigger problem is that, so the song DNA, when he posted the song, it, and he had this caption about our Korean roots. Like I want to say, our Korean, our Korean people have endured a lot. We came through all the through the thick and thin, and right. we rose on the top. Right. And it's in my DNA. Right. Our oh. Korean people, and he really stuck to this Korean roots thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you see the video. Right. <laughs> and, aesthetically. And, then, and then aesthetically, <laughs> right. You have all yeah. these things that stem from Black culture, right? Right. So it just clashes with what he's saying in the caption to the video. So what the so, motherfuckers want? The handbooks? Like what are we? And, want? But but here's but that's what i'm saying people right. are saying why don't you lean in more into the korean roots then? right right you know so so to me i get both sides you know like i don't think jay intended what, what it to be but this is literally the landscape of korean right. i was just gonna right. say that <laughs> yeah. just, I was he just, just literally put you know he's all he's doing he just assembled 30 korean rappers right that are the up-and-coming korean rappers of right now this right. is how they look this is it? right wow. this is how they look but I see how people are gonna look at this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't. This is always listen. I used to write about this shit before the of course, cross, before yep. the Talk crossover. Right? We talked. We've talked about it we, so many times. I like here. This is. This was inevitable. This is inevitable, especially right now. We sort of live in a. I like to call it like the Tumblr society, mm. where like um, people are mad woke. Right. This has been. They've been doing this for for right. decades, right, bro. Right. 
this crossover is not, uh, it's going to be problematic. Yeah. It's going to be hard. Remember, remember when, I, I guess I have a question though. Like, remember when Ichima came out? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the, the Japanese version. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what that looked like? What did it look like? Can we bring that? Because I'm sort of interested what they were styled like. I mean, people they, fucked they were, with it. They people were sound, I mean, they, that wasn't really like a hair kind of criticism. It was more like, you know, trap. You know, they're like, but no, no, they didn't get the criticism trap. for this, did they? I don't think so. Yeah, it was OG Mako uh, remix, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. But visually, you know, but you know what? Also, I feel like this it, song has to be an extra. Was banger. it not good? Was the, <laughs> was no, no, the song, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. The, the Jay's DNA songs is cool. It's not Ichima. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. It's not Ichima, but also you got like way more rappers like, on the the DNA, the J Park. I mean, joint. look at look, I mean, we we fucked with this when it came out. Yeah, yeah it, they did. And People I, did I, fuck like, with it. Pre, I like to say pre twenty fourteen. Yeah, and pre like uh, Cole is wearing too, yeah. grills and stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, people. There was people saying little things here and there, but I think it is also the times. You it's know, the times, it's sure. definitely the times too, but. There's so many different elements that happen with these kind of things. Right. You know what I mean? What, like for example, right? And this is sound. This is so strange. When I used to write about these these uh, K hip hop artists, when they would talk about who their inspirations were, they would they would list some real ass you know black artists, right? Mm-hmm. That like I'm just like, well, how do you know? But then they would say problematic as shit. Like I wish I could sing like a black person. Yeah. Right. Oh. And so it's this reverence. That's problematic because that context doesn't exist normally in Korea. When people, when the those men are coming up to me and like, "Yo, your your head, your head, your hair looks nice. Your head yeah, wrap looks yeah. nice." Yeah. Um, if I'm in America, I don't know that I'm cool with that. Right. You know what I mean? When I'm in Korea, I it's a different context. Mm. The problem is, it's just not going to translate because we live in a no context mm. world, right? Exactly. It's just not gonna. It's not gonna. No context. It's the world. That, that's that's the biggest. I think you said a huge thing. That's the true. no context world. No like, context world. Even a lot of people who might see that video may not even know Jay Park's history and what his stance on everything 100%, is because. You know. Jay, Jay Park, I mean, he's really said a lot about these things and, and had been an advocate for, you know, really stating certain mm-hmm. things. But he made he made some key mistakes in this he thing yeah, because in the beginning, if you're talking about what the, the song is supposed to represent, your Korean roots through your DNA and mm-hmm. all, what the Korean people's endured, think about what people are going to automatically look for when they see the video for it. Yeah. And, and then you see 30 dudes who yeah. it looks like they're trying to copy or emulate a hairstyle, clothing yeah. styles. Like but he's seeing the positive. He's like, yo, these are my guys. We're about to show you who we are, right? Mm. It's the same thing. It's almost like, it's almost like the same reason in Bad Rap when Rex Dizzy got um, his, the idea was to show I am different. I'm American. I'm this in this weird way. And they didn't take it like that. They said, why don't you just show us who you are as a Korean guy, right? Sure. Like that's what American audience want to see. They don't want to see what they feel is cosplaying as a black person. Right. 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 Like keep that shit in Korea is how they feel. Right. You know what I mean? Right. right. I don't know if it's going to translate. I don't know. You know, to me, I, I, I think, uh, you know, I'm just talking about how people are going to see it. Right. Cause mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily like angry about it or nothing, right. but it does bug me. It bugs me because shit like that affects Asian Americans more than people out there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Those guys are still going to get bottle service at any club they get into and get taken care of. They're going to be praised. They're going to get branding deals out there. But when people out here or globally see that, yeah. mm-hmm. we're going to be the ones having these conversations. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. And, and that is annoying to me. Mm. And that's why I have a problem with that. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Because that's just a gospel for us. Like, I'm but, not but out you here. know what? Right, Let right. me tell you something, right? When, but before, before Bad Rap like, came out fully, you guys had gotten into it. I, I, I once went to bed. And I woke up, and on Twitter, you, you, and Aquafina, and maybe Rex <laughs> oh, Dizzy yeah, had gotten was... into it with some uh, woke Asians, is right. what you said to me, right? And like, who were saying, you're appropriating black culture just by rapping, right? right? Uh-huh. And on top of that, I had Jay Key as my producer who was going around with me, and I didn't even realize right. Jay Key has a accent. <laughs> yeah, you know? So, like, 
uh right. it's just what so like even people were like that with yeah and that, that they were like that with us just for rapping just so for rapping. yeah yeah so i mean that obviously is gonna get it you know right. um but and I like mean, do you part, feel do you feel more woke are you more do you feel more woke because you're looking at this dean i, I have no i don't know I no no it. because my stance then of me just rapping has always just been the same you know like have having been part of this culture having understanding the history of course like there's nothing that I feel like uh, I have to answer to, mm. you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, uh, but this specifically is something else, uh -huh. you know, this okay. is something else. So yeah. like, I'm just kind of talking about how people are looking at this whole yeah. thing. I'm not yeah. talking about my personal thoughts mm. on it. I know some of those kids. Mm. I know some of those kids. Do uh -huh. I agree with the hairstyles? No, I don't ag always agree with it. Do I think it's the biggest deal? No, right. because I know these kids don't know better either. And that's yeah. not an excuse, but God, what am I really? It's it's hard. Like these kids, they're in a whole other world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This shit is a. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. I was saying the whole it's cultural appreciation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like the easy way of trying to get out. But yo, it's it's yeah. It's... I mean, I wish we could see all of this and you know past all the aesthetic. Mm. Mm. The aesthetic and just maybe the words of the music and the beats and whatever it is that brings us, you know. Um, but but hip hop is is, is 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 it's not like any other genre. It's, it has every other aspect to it. It's not just the music, mm. you know. Hip hop hip hop is something mm. that's it goes beyond it. it. It's it's everything. It is everything, and who you are. That's why I say this. Like when I talk about you know representing who you are, uh, you know when I said it, when I hop on stage, it goes beyond just my music right. because it is. It's true. Hundred percent. It's true. I'm gonna honestly. be real with you. Sorry for cutting you off. I just thought about something, and it is just that like, and I'm I'm not excusing anything. I'm just thinking. It's thought pro thought uh, yeah. experiment. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm. I watch. Uh, who's the three six nine? Uh, six nine. What's his name? Takashi six, six nine. Takashi, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my guy is wearing weaves. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, you know, you got the little pump, and you have a yeah. lot of these non-black uh -huh. American artists uh -huh. who are absolutely appropriating. No one calls them out on it. No one says anything. I actually see them. I actually see them on par as uh, the, the folks in the DNA, the rappers in the DNA video, <laughs> I see them on par, right? I, I just, I'm just saying to think about it, right? If we are talking about appropriation, yeah. if we're talking about some bullshit, right. or if we're just saying, oh, it's fun, he's just having fun, that's it, and then let that be it. You're but that's why fun. all these things have different factors. I know. It's so It's so tricky, right? It's like you, what you said about Ichima and yeah. DNA. It's also like, Sometimes some certain songs are extra bangers yeah. and you might get a pass. <laughs> right. That shit better right. knock. <laughs> like it knocked the th <laughs> the, th the think piece out of me. <laughs> That shit slaps so hard. Like, I was going to write a thing piece, but it slaps. <laughs> the song slaps. Like, uh, you know what I mean? So there yeah. are so many factors to this. Mm -hmm. Or there's a guy who might be so, like, ridiculous that you're just not. It's exhausting. Yeah. You're yeah. like, that's not even worth. <laughs> like, yeah. obviously, this sure. is a joke and people yeah. don't even want to go sure. into it. It's just riffraff, you know? Right, right. Got you. And I was just saying that too with that video. Like, he might have gotten away if it was like a six person posse cut. <laughs> 30? <laughs> 30? There's a limit. You throw six motherfuckers with braids. Okay, maybe you put 30 dudes with variations of black hair? No. Yeah. Like, you're going to get yeah. called out for that. I gotta watch. That's I have hard. to watch that video. I need to listen to it. I'm gonna watch yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. but you, but you, there's so many factors. You're yeah. right. There's yeah. so many fucking factors. There's so many factors. Yet there's also no context. No context. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. So, it's, it's so weird. Yeah, but but there's no context for uh, for the audience, the American audience. But there's also no context for them. Very little context for the artists there. So right. there's just like yeah. a bunch of no context going around. Every, yeah. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. It's not. It's not gonna work. It's not. All right. Damn. Okay. Yido, thank oh, you. Sorry. Yido was on the whole time. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I just wanted to like put in some quick comments here. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you gotta go. Yeah, I gotta okay, go. cool. Peace out. Steph Steffi has to go. She has another job. Yeah. Bye, Steph. Bye, See ya. Yeah. Um, we'll do it later. You can just have to Photoshop her in later or something. <laughs> Bye. Good to meet you. All right. Yeah. What's your comments, Yudo? Bye, Steph. Bye. Yeah, I just wanted to like think through because there was a lot of information being being passed around here. Um, I guess like. The Ichima case, um, it was a lot about, I guess the narrative at the time, I think was a lot about the commercial aspect of like really biting Ojinako's kind of flow beat, like in the whole like music video concept. And so that was oh, very, yeah. very much more of the, I think it was framed more as like a commercial 
uh, kind of overlap with with in, in that sense. And so right. Koji Michael had a very like personal problem with it, and then they worked it out, and I think it was much better. Um, and I think when I think through like um, appropriation here in in, uh, in North America, I'm in Canada, but like, um, like if if someone here that is not black is kind of appropriating the culture and the aesthetic and the music. Um, to a commercial end, they're directly competing with black artists that might um, be more deeply rooted in the culture and, in our colloquial sense, deserve it more, right? Mm. As far as that commercial sense, I don't see a lot of that um, being a factor in the, in the Korean hip hop conversation. Um, they're not really competing for market share per se here, and so they're not interfering with the well-being of black artists per se. Um, what I think. There is a huge problem, which is that they are extending a lot of the most problematic and most um, kind of toxic, pure aesthetic views of black culture. And mm. they use their music and their aesthetic for commercial ends. And they're not really doing anything to perpetuate or support the underlying framework of hip hop as kind of a celebration of black culture. Um, celebrating black there, there, you know what there's actually some interesting things he said right mm -hmm. here yeah mm -hmm. about yeah. The, the the types of appropriation yeah. exactly mm -hmm. from the aesthetic side to aesthetic. korea but the yeah. the korean american or, or asian american the appropriation of taking money away from that's black creatives hands mm -hmm. right which is that's that's pretty interesting mm -hmm. but the truth yeah. is can't you see that the same way with Asian artists too, mm. because Asian art, Asian artists, if they you know appropriate black culture in Asia, it's it's global music. Yeah, this is all global. <clears throat> I, I think it all goes hand in hand. The same thing with that. I, I don't know. That is true. What are your thoughts? Uh, I do you have any thoughts? No, no, no. Please. I, I don't. Uh, this. Oh God. I don't know how we got into that. I know yeah, we've, we've talked a, about this so many time. times. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a hard conversation. I would say. I resonate with what Yido said about the aesthetic that I, I agree with that just taking the aesthetic and nothing else and not showing any other part it's like the caricature and the um, stereotype of what blackness is that's that's an issue I would love I mean not that I would love I don't I don't care but like what about a nerd like is there a nerd you know hip hopper you know Korean rapper or is it always the grill the afro you know is it always that right what else is there right mm. maybe this is the beta part maybe this is the point 1.0 and you know there is a 2.0 and a 3.0 coming right i don't know the answer i mean there are variations of that already i think pete this is the polarizing thing though like what what ver what just I mean, there is the nerdy Korean rapper and all that you know the Ooh. softer all those there's most Korean rap uh, does lean there's a lot of k-pop leaning korean that, rap right right you know but even I mean, the k-pop even the k-pop stuff from what i from what i remember i can't think it was like epic high okay okay you know that was like more like happy korean rap you know happy <laughs> i don't know what to say it's like very like uh pleasant coffee sure, shop sure korean rap yes yeah yeah coffee you shop. know yeah 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 so who oh, we're doing tabla yeah, 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 I'm just saying there's there are different. Like, yeah, dumb <laughs> I'm the nerdy rapper, but I said this like honestly, a lot of my one of the reasons that people fucked with me early on was when I was coming up, all the Korean rappers were trying to be, trying to be extra hard. Oh. Yeah, and I was like, I am a Wait, normal Korean, guy. Which Korean rappers? Amer oh, Korean them. American yeah, 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 rappers? Yeah, yeah. I, Amer Korean Americans. Like yeah, I would yeah. look at Rick and Danny, the Cipher, oh, Shogun, oh, all of them. Yeah. Yeah, as yeah. like you know the east coast oh, rappers yeah. like obviously look more like street right mm -hmm. i was the like if you saw my career and you're like oh this is guys like a lupe or like right, a, right. But i'm talking about the korean the korean rappers right who like they have the same sort of i don't know if there's any other like nerdy korean rapper who's trying to uh, cro uh you know cross over mm. but like it's always the caricature as the aesthetic Right. Mm -hmm. That's 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 a I, I got a side eye that there's something to be said for that. You know, what else you got? Is there a different aesthetic and you're still a dope rapper? You know what I mean? Can you right. show us that? I'd be more open to that. You know, I, I feel like, uh, yeah, you know, thanks for calling, man. Yeah. We're going to keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. um, that yeah, you said sure. some good, great points, though. Um, before we get Mac easy on, I will say there's been so much conversation in the past couple of years about uh, the, the black and Asian relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, the one thing I just want to point out in the past year that I think does, has done wonders 
for that community being bridged and the solidarity is mixed artists that are half black, half Asian. Ooh. Yes. And just by them winning. Yeah. No panels, no nothing. <laughs> just by half black, half yeah. Asian artists winning and representing both sides. Like who? Her. Her. her Shout out uh, Wolf. Sweetie. Sweetie, J uh, Janae Aiko, even Anderson when he, talk when he talks about Anderson. his Korean roots. Yeah. Wolf uh, Tyler. Wolf Tyler, Guap right. Dad 4000. Yeah. Just by these artists, mm. I feel like yeah. embracing both sides, which Sweetie does. She talks about Filipino mm -hmm. side a lot. Her mm -hmm. does too. And I, I just feel like them winning has just done yeah. more than, and just the than celebrity of Asian panels or right. whatnot because mm -hmm. what, they, what they're doing is just showing young Asian mm -hmm. and black youth. Ah. Yeah. That like that they represent both of us yeah. and you know there's more similarities. I there. mean their parents did uh, the ultimate collaboration, you know. Yeah, it shows it creates more empathy for each other's community mm. just when they do their thing, I feel like. Yeah. Mm. I don't nah, know. Nah, for sure, yeah. dude. Um all right, for let's sure. talk to Mac Easy real quick. Oh, Mac Easy, I know this guy. I think. Hello. All right. What's up, Mac? Hi. Hey. What up, Mac? Uh, um yeah, no, I, I kind of missed about um, like the first hour because I was on my way home after work. But uh, no, I basically called in because um, I knew Salima was going on, and um, I'm a just wanted to give her her flowers and show appreciation for like making bad rap um, all the all the way back then because uh, I saw Dumb announce it like way back in like 2013, and then um, you know seeing it go through. Uh, the production stages and then uh, actually seeing it go onto Netflix and all the platforms and really like putting Asians and hip hop and entertainment out there and elevating everyone on another level. So, you know, I just wanted to thank you for doing that. And uh, Mac, you were there, you were there from the beginning. Like thank you. I remember you for sure. Yeah, the doc was yeah, all right. I, I mean, I even um, <laughs> put like uh, an appreciation um, post on uh, Instagram just like seeing like, you know, it, it, I was just so proud seeing it like go, go out there and um, yeah, just uh, just wanted to. Um, Show appreciation for that, basically. Salima Karama, oh, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you. real talk though, she put so many, so much, so many hours and and love and years into this. You said five, six years. Four, or five, yeah. Four, or five yeah. years so did of you your guys. life. So did you guys? Nah, but after we did our part, like we we're <laughs> we we're done. You're like, no, you edit and submit it to the festivals and all that. We'll just show up to the premiere. Um. <laughs> But yeah, that, I I appreciate it. Now I really I feel like I have like like a time capsule or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. This yeah. thing is so special to me. Um, Mac, I think I, I don't know if I don't remember if it was if it was you. Did you have some merch of ours? Did you have like the bad rap? Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Did you ever? Were I, you I the one? Who, were you the one who took a photo with Chance the rapper? Was that you? Yep. Yeah. That was you. Wow. Was so he like had the bad the, the bad well. rap gear on and was like hanging out with Chance. Just to see the fact that Chance the Rapper and you were, you know, saw our bad rap merch, that was pretty cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I wanted to, um, because I, when I went to that concert, uh, it was like, for, it had to meet and greet and everything. And I thought, okay, um, you know, I'm going to get a photo with Chance. So I want to, like, you know, represent, uh, you know, uh, Asians in hip hop and, and, and all that. So, you know, um, I purposely um, put that out there. And I think Chance may have, um, like, did some things with uh, some some of um uh some of uh, uh d well the bad rap um crew as well so i thought oh you know maybe this might like spark something <laughs> in his mind or something like that so uh yeah um just uh just did that but um, awesome. no, again like thank you for um, all that you've done thank you for your support seriously for all, throughout the years thank you so much wow some people are calling this the top guest so far whoa no, Five all, guests. All to us. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All, all yes. to you, We've had some incredible documentary filmmakers. Really? Here. No, no, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're the <laughs> only one. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for calling in, Mac. And your flowers have been given to Salima. <clears throat> Thank you, yep. guys. Keep doing your thing. Thank, Thank you. you. London on the track. What's up? Hi, London. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> What's good? How's it going? Good. <laughs> Good, Listen. good. Uh, I don't want to beat the J Park thing, you know, like a dead horse, but I did have to call in about it. Um, just because I think there's some added context to that, you know, comes into the conversation with it being called DNA. Mm. Um, I, I've read mixed things, you know, and some people have said it's kind of like a riff off of uh, Kendrick Lamar's DNA. So if you're like thinking about it, you know, also from that context and that video and like, 
you know, his experience as a black man and talking about how, you know, it's in his DNA to be, you know, coming up from oppression and things like that. And if you're thinking about it like, oh, in a way where it's kind of like an ode to that song, and if he wanted to put his own spin on it and, you know, do that, then I think, yeah, it should have showcased a lot more of the Korean, you know, culture and that kind of side of right. things. And it's, you know, and it's kind of difficult because, like, with the black community, like, hip hop is kind of like black culture. It's not all of black culture, but it's so ingrained that it's also just like, it's hard to separate to say this is just hip hop, you know, and this is just black culture and whatnot. And I think that's why people get, you know, kind of got really mm. upset and felt the kind of way about it. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the truth is, kids out there don't want to wear humbucks and rap you know wearing humbucks and, 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 and yeah, i know and, and be in like hella korean out shit right because we I love mean, doing that as korean americans here right we love doing all this like korean that's aesthetic true, shit but true. i'm telling you you go out there they don't like that shit no. when they, they want yeah. like palm trees and, and low riders right, right. and shit yeah. and, <laughs> no real yeah. talk like yeah, i'm just being real, real shit but, but it's also but but then if if it was the same video and it wasn't called DNA and it didn't have that disclaimer about the you know being proud of ah, you know I think it would have been a totally different story. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I just like to add same something? video under a different context? You know, London. I don't know if you remember back in like 2013 or something like that. Um, I think it was Kendrick. It might have been Drake. One of them came out with a song where they called out everybody. They called out Control. Like, Control. Kendrick. Ken, uh, Kendrick. Yeah. It was Kendrick, yeah. right? Yeah. And re I don't know if you remember, but that like set off this whole domino effect where hella Korean rappers started making these this, yeah, tr diss these tracks. diss tracks, yeah. right? Like they were energized by yeah. this moment and mm. felt like, yo, I want to have my posse cut where I where I diss mm -hmm. this person, this person, this yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost feels like this is the energy that that has. Mm. Is like, yo, I'm gonna show you the dopest. Like we're not, you know, we are dope too, and I'm gonna show you the dopest motherfuckers in Korea, right? Like I can see that sort of and leaning into this like. Um, Asian pride thing yeah. that's happening right now. Right. I can see why it was thought to be a good idea. You see, right. that's why mm -hmm. everything snowballed into a terrible thing mm -hmm. because that's what it should have been. It, the whole thing got diverted. Mm -hmm. No one was listening to the raps. They started just go attacking everything, right? Because right. that's what Jay wanted to do. I don't think there's anything wrong with just being like, oh, the song's called DNA because he's just being like because you know korean he's talking about his korean dna yeah. and his the roots of koreans and their oppression throughout history too that's what he said in the caption right but that made it a huge problem when you see the visual you Ooh. know what i'm saying like yeah. shit has to resonate too if you're gonna make a music video that shit better rock when you turn the uh, volume down to yeah. mute 100 percent. it has to hit 100%. the message should hit too that way right without that's the music true. that's true Are there think, no images of like korean shit because i think that would have been dope I'm gonna do one today. <laughs> Damn, I, I I don't know. I just feel like that's the thing that went wrong. Uh, you know, talking uh -huh. about the the because that's what he was trying to imply with the DNA part yeah. about our the proud history of, of Korean culture. But when you see the music video, you don't necessarily also, see the pride, right? Like, do you see uh, the pride see. of Korean right, culture in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're proud of your natural hair. <laughs> Yes. Let that shit go down straight <laughs> as fuck like bangs, motherfucker. Like you better have hey, thirty. There should have been thirty dudes with bangs in there. That's how I say. There should have been thirty Korean rappers with bangs. Banging. That shit just <laughs> right, 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 straight, right, right. straight as a fucking arrow going right. down your fucking face. Yeah, I swear to God, I, I didn't want to see one curl. Right, right. <laughs> if they were proud of who they are, they shouldn't have had one curl. <laughs> in that music video okay Damn. Yeah. and i think the other issue was the you know throwing up signs and stuff like that because even black people will call other black people out if you're bank you know you're not from the hood and you're doing all kinds of you know stuff oh were they throwing the up signs too a lot it's like you know they were throwing up some signs and i watched a couple like reaction videos and people are saying you know like you know i have people who have died behind this and stuff and like i, know, I, under, those I are, even know i i, I know no, a lot that's of for those sure, are yeah. all understandable I guess, criticism i get that i get yeah, that yeah, i'm yeah, literally yeah. i think there's so much elements but i'm just saying to the simple point it's <laughs> like as a creative right you look at that it is not Yo. it's not presented well mm. you know what i mean i dude i trust me i love jay i i don't think jay is a bad guy at all like no. i'm just talking about 
as a creative standpoint, yeah, 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 yeah like I'm it's sorry. not a good call. People, you know? I, I know people right now are saying, "Well, why do I got to wear handbags?" It's not that. It's it, I guess I'm coming from right. like if I am like when I watch, let's say Wale, who's yeah. African, right? When he's yeah. repping Nigeria, I'm not Nigerian, but you know when he's repping Nigeria, that feels the type of way. You know, if he's he comes into mm. uh, the scene and he's wearing sort of like the Africana, yeah. you know, with just a little bit, just a little bit of right, it, right, right? right? That shit is fire. When you mm. used to go to your battles, the battle that you went to, you had this like the Korean, Korean flag, flag yeah. that yeah. was dope. And I guess that's what I'm talking. I'm not talking about motherfuckers got to go in wearing the humbucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. there is an el- there is some element if you're trying to cross over into an American, like, let's be real. You're coming into an American entertainment uh, sphere Mm -hmm. and there's certain things that you have to do. There's just certain things that you have to do, period. And maybe some of that is, and this is what uh, old boy was trying to say in Bad Rap about Rex Dizzy. I want to know a little bit about you. I want to know a little bit about you. Don't tell me about me. I've already seen it. Like Tell your me. look in itself would already carry it over. That's what he said. Exactly. Yeah. I remember. So I don't know. Just get more creative. I'm not the fucking creative director, you know, but yeah, come I up mean, with something. All this shit is so tricky because I feel like sometimes like it's a washed conversation, but mm. I know it's also an important conversation. Yeah. There's young black kids who don't give a fuck. There's people who do right. give a fuck. It's a, it's just a very difficult uh, right. you know conversation. I I think just purely off of the visual though, I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I can see it. Yeah. And I said this yeah. before. Maybe if I you had like- four people in the posse cut, <laughs> you got 30 motherfuckers yeah, 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 with yeah. variations of black hair. Yeah, yes, yeah. you are going to get it. <laughs> if, if you look like a barbershop poster, <laughs> <laughs> number one through 30 in the yeah. music video, you're going to get roasted oh, or called God. out. You okay. know what I'm saying? For sure. I, For sure. I'm just I'll being take, real. I'll take that. Yeah, you're right. I was going to say, I also get that he wanted to showcase, you know, Korean artists. Obviously, he said that and stuff. But I think it also would have been a difference and maybe taken a little bit more as, like, appreciation instead sort of appropriation. If there was a person of color in the video or there was, you know, somebody, if it's kind of just like seeing that right. many people, you know, with that aesthetic and not one single, you know. Yeah, I, like, I get, you know, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I guarantee you he did not think about this. So imagine this, right? Mm. He sends the track out to 25 Korean rappers that he thinks are killing it right mm. now. They all lay a verse. June 10th, <laughs> come to this music video shoot. 30 rappers come, right? All these hairstyles. You're shooting the fucking video. Right. Yeah. You're going to shoot the video. Yeah. It's all ready to go. Yeah. Oh, I see. And you might not even... Who knows? Maybe he, finally, when they all showed up, he noticed it for the first time. Yeah. Like, oh, shit, look at this. <laughs> There's something yeah, going on. There's a pattern here. Yeah. There's a pattern right. here. Maybe he was worried or not. And then he shot, shoots the video. He sees it. I think he was even worried at that point. Yeah. I don't I don't think Jay stooped. I think he even noted that. I think he wrote something that mm. he ran it by a publicist or something. And he uh, still he put PR it. I told him not to release it. Right. This was before, right? It was actually released. Yeah. So his yeah, PR exactly. says, don't release it. So... It was going through the thing. It was like Kendall Jenner and the Pepsi campaign. Uh-huh. It made it towards the end. That uh-huh. shit went through a lot of execs, and they were still like, no, let's run it. Oh, my God. At Rock Nation, right? Yeah, at yeah, Rock, yeah. Rock Nation. Rock, Rock Nation. Nation. But here's the, that's the interesting thing you say, too, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, maybe more Asian people could have been like, maybe not run it, mm-hmm. but... There could have been black, black execs too who were like, maybe we should run Let it. Let me tell they you something. Been. I I will tell you what I believe to be true. Yeah. I believe black execs would look at that and think that's dope. That's that. Or even something. white or execs. Period. Exactly. Would exactly. look at that and feel like that's dope. Because it's it's there's a lot of energy. There's there. a lot there's, of energy yeah. in there. It's different. It's kind of weird and different. The industry right will like it, and Tumblr, Twitter will not. Right. And and even I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know how to. I don't know if I care about it. But people are talking about it. We've been here talking about it for the last hour. Right. You know, I think, I think it's a very interesting topic because true. because we've talked about this for so much. And of course, cultural appropriation, sometimes it gets exhausting. Yeah. But this case is so interesting to me because it's a huge posse cut. Um, I think that thing makes a huge difference. The is energy it doing well behind Korea? it. It's, is it doing well No, they took it down. They took it down. Oh. Jay actually took it down, which is interesting to me, that aspect too. So that... And I, my friends, we've had this conversation. People are like, I don't think you should have taken it down. Mm-hmm. And this, and did that make it worse? And all, mm-hmm. all those things. But it, it just, seeing so many of them at once makes a difference. You know, yeah, the energy good. of it mm-hmm. makes a difference. 
sensory overload, dude. Yeah, and I you know me, I just I, love I, talking about chilies. I kind of appreciate it too, though, because I've had lots of convos about it too. And if one thing is doing it, Sean, that all black people don't think alike. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate yep. that because I've gotten into many conversations and, well, this black person doesn't feel offended or my friend loved it and this and that. And yes, guess what? Black people think differently. We all have different, you know, views on things. So that I actually kind of appreciate that these conversations came out of that and people are seeing that we're not this monolith that mm. is bothered by every single thing or that we're always looking for a reason to like call people out this and that yep. and that we can be accepting and it doesn't bother some people so i appreciate yeah. that i i think you know every korean uh rapper's music video shoot they should always have like 20 to 30 fittings ready to cover up any hairstyle any yes. at any given <laughs> point <laughs> You never know what's going to go down. Oh you never know who's God. going to pull up with wet hairstyle. You got to get ready to cover it. They should have just put it, you know, it's a, the blurry sensor bar over their yeah. heads. What do you yeah, think? I don't know. I just something to. There's, that's kind of interesting, <laughs> right? Like, like this is what I'm talking about. And this is, uh, this is fucking weird. I shouldn't even say this right now. But if I were to see that video, it would have to be a commentary on the appropriation itself, mm-hmm. right? So I would love to see all the appropriation blurred out, right? Like that would a be black bar, yo. right? Like I, that'd be kind of interesting. How hard do you think the the criticism would have been if if everyone's hair was just you know their natural hair mm. Mm. And, and it was just the same video? I'm curious. I have to see the video. I have to see the video. Do you think they would get uh, the um, Oh yeah, I think the hairstyle is is trigger style. I think they would have been fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The biggest thing, it's not the clothes or nothing like that. I have to see it. I I mean, say they threw out gang signs, all this shit, the same thing, except the hair was just like... Mm. Cute, like, this like great. Korean perms <laughs> and uh, Korean bangs. I'm and telling shit you, and... that fro that I saw, I mean, you really, he teased the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. That's like a lot of work. <laughs> Yo, no, oh I gotta, I gotta hit God. the, uh, the, the uh, COVID test. Oh, right now? Yeah. Oh, okay, like cool. Three, All right, we're gonna wrap it up then. Yeah, London, yeah. thanks for calling up. Thank you. Uh, yeah. All right, bye. Three, Thank you. Um, that was a good combo. That I honestly crazy. think that might have been better than anything piece that's out there on this topic. Right. Or, you know, any TikTok video. That was great. We really broke that down. That was great. We really broke it down. Um, Salima Karoma, director of Bad Rap, director of Dreamland, The Burning of Black Wall Street. Mm. No. Very, very excited to see what you have in store next. Oh, thank you. I love you guys. Queen. Love okay, so I know we were supposed to eat after this. I have to take my Mac to the store. I did not know it was going to take this okay, long. Okay, I know. So can we too. like, can we get yeah, together? Jesus. But you guys always, when I come in town, you guys come in town, you guys, I see photos of you and fucking wow. Decipher and Aquafina and Rex Dizzy. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, we're here in Philly. We're here at this fucking Korean Well, you know, we we were, we thought you were really busy with with LeBron. Projects. With LeBron, LeBron yeah. yeah, LeBron Kim. Yeah, apparently you weren't busy for four or five years. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Should have hit you up. I didn't know you were going through a tough time. I would have loved to buy you a meal during those rough times. Um, yeah, but we love you, Salima. Gun. We love uh, that you created something that we can take on to the rest of our lives mm-hmm. and look back on and be embarrassed about it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but Salima Chrome, make sure you guys go check out Dreamland, The Burning of Black Wall Street. Thank you guys. Tune in next week for another episode of Fun With Dumb. Yes, Thank you yes, guys. yes, yes. Peace, peace, peace.